Good afternoon and welcome to beautiful Manchester Field on the University of San Diego's campus. You are watching College Rugby on TVX Sports Video. I'm Scott Thomas, Assistant Director of USD Rugby, joined here in the booth by Will Hooley. Scott, what a joy to be here. So good to be in the beautiful campus that is USD, watching the Toreros take on ASU. Thank you for having me back. Uh, great to have you here, Will. That was an absolutely rubbish introduction. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I meant to say, recently retired Legionnaire, USA Eagle, U20 Englishman, U18 Englishman, Exeter Chief, Saracen. Am I missing anything? You're listing all these brilliant things. Yes, I did. I hand my CV into you just before the game. Very kind. I looked you up on LinkedIn. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, putting myself into a different role now, uh, involved with Major League Rugby and the Rugby Network in the broadcasting space. So, um, yeah, I've hopped the other side of the fence, not on the field anymore. Fantastic. It's great to have you here, Will. Thank you so much for being here for this D1 AA conference matchup. A little bit of a David and Goliath match here. Arizona State University boasting a strong enrollment of over 75,000 students towering over the 9,000 plus enrollment of USD. A little David and Goliath here, but the Toreros will, are looking to bring the Sun Devils to church on this Sunday matchup. Love what you've done there. Love what you've done there. And I love also what Charlie Purden, head coach Charlie Purden is doing here at USD. Yes, I'm a little bit biased, of course. He's still associated with the, within the coaching team at San Diego Legion, but I 
enjoy my times here at Manchester Field watching USD and what he has put together, a group of young men who really do work hard for each other and I'm sure a group of young men who really do work hard for each other and I'm sure starting this conference season we'll be looking to get underway with a, with a win themselves. Arizona State recently boasting a win over Claremont the College is there, so they're coming in with a 1-0 conference record. As we look to some of these keys for victory for Arizona State, they are a large pack, Will. We can see it right here in the broadcast. they got some big bodies, don't they? They absolutely do. We watched them warming up, and uh, their type 5 in particular have got some sizable guys. Be interesting how well they get around the park, though. Remember, it's 80 minutes worth of rugby. That first start of the game, obviously crucial, but fitness might be one of the big things that USD can count on. But let's be honest, you can see on screen there, there's a few big carrying forwards and uh, coach Peter Hugo as well. I'm sure we'll have them all ramped up, ready to go. Absolutely. Captain Nick Davies looks ready to go. Big old number five. That's going to be Carter Carlson. Look out for the danger men on the wings for ASU, Evgeny and Cooper Baines. Yeah, really intrigued to see how ASU will play and attack today. Again, looking like they got some strong ball carriers, but equally we've been hearing about their pace out on the width. So about feeding the speed, Scott, feeding the speed. And that's, of course, what the Terreras will try and do. I remember a couple of those individuals uh, commentated on last year, one in particular, Michael Lewis at 10. Very good distributing game and a kicking game. So he really will be pivotal in making sure the Terreros attack on, uh, attack on top. Absolutely, Will. They're looking to control the pace of this play, exit out of those danger areas, and play the game that they want to play with an emphasis on the set pieces, pieces today. We had a chance to sit down with Charlie Purden earlier this week, and he says that the Terreros are looking to win their lineouts, their scrums at a very high conversion rate so that they can keep the ball in their hands and in attacking territory, Will. That that is crucial in any form of rugby having a strong set piece and I think for the first game of this conference season for the Toreros if you can just get that first ball in from the line out that first scrum under your belt and have that confidence to play off it that will really start the game but it will be the same for ASU they want to make sure that their set piece is strong and we've talked about the size of their front five I have no doubt that they will maybe have a strong driving game a good quality set piece scrum that gives them a good platform. Sir is counting the numbers on each side. I think we're getting ready to go here, Will, and I think, I think it will be USD kicking off to ASU here. We do have a little bit of a field abnormality. As you can see, the Sir is standing at midfield, which is our 45-yard line. And it looks like the Toreros will indeed kick to Arizona State to start things off here. And as is tradition, we're hearing calls for who wants the first hit. We cannot legally start an American rugby game until that is said, Will. That is a true fact. <laughs> well, I'm intrigued to see as well how this goes at the beginning. Slight wind on the screen that well, well, viewers may not, of course, know, coming from left to right. So Terreros will go slightly into this breeze. They might have to keep the ball a little bit more in hand. The ASU, though, let's see how they get going. Whistles off and the kick is up. Lewis goes short. To the number eight for ASU and a strong first hit by the Toreros as they look to defend the first phase of this game. A missed pass out there in the back. Bumbled around but caught and secured by Arizona State. Spun out again for another phase of play here. Out to the wings, a broken tackle by the 13 outside center. That was Bennett Rone. Strong carry there as the ball is now brought back towards us. There's the captain with his first carry, Nick Davies. Sun Devils here with their fifth phase of attack here. Ball appear to be knocked on, and we will have a scrum to San Diego. What did you see early on here, Will? Well, it's uh, confident from ASU to just play straight away from the kickoff. Great defensive hit by the Toreros running onto that ball from Lewis's short kickoff. Surprising, trying to maybe even win the ball back. But an interesting attacking option now for the Toreros to just inside the half of the ASU side. The Sun Devils, love that name. So it'll be interesting to see what Lewis at 10 decides to do, whether he goes direct to begin with or whether they get an early ball to spin out wide. O'Leary feeds the ball into the scrum, but it's won by the Sun Devils, and they will attack through the wing. The ball is unfortunately dropped, but it seemed to have gone back, so we'll play on here on Manchester Field. ASU spins the ball out. Ball's going to turf a little bit. 
And the Toros make them pay with another tackle behind the gain line. There's a pocket form for the 10 to clearance kick. Ball finds some space in the middle of the field here. It will be collected by the senior, Devin Hoovel. Fullback here. He's looking for space. He's calling on. Nate left out here on the wing. Cuts back inside. Spun down and we'll have the first offensive phase for the Toreros. Scrum half Mickey O'Leary spins out to Hooker. Logan Leroy Tatum. Latched on by a couple of attacking uh, teammates there. Spun out. That's Brandon Guaiducci from the Napa Valley area. Third phase for the Toreros. O'Leary to Lewis. And out to Hoovel here in the wing. Strong carry inside the 22 of the Arizona State Sun Devils. There's some space on the width now for the Toreros, and they can move it. Oh, no, they're going back to the short side. It's a counterattack here by the Toreros. Chase Basson with a strong carry and dummy as the Toreros are edging ever closer to the try line here. That was Josh Butler with a strong carry there. And another phase of attack here. Toreros failing to find the space here, and it looks like the Sun Devils are trying to poach that ball, but a good latching ruck there by Leroy Tatum prevents that from being a turnover. Devin Hoovel collects a sloppy pill. Good, strong hit there. That was number six. Pierce McNamara, the vice captain for the Sun Devils, and a nice tackle, but Torres looked like they have an overlap here with a strong looping skip pass. Good tackle on the wing there to prevent a breakout try by Jackson Short. O'Leary spins it back in. Toreros are looking for some space. It's a strong planting tackle is made by the Sun Devils. Toreros are trying to find a little gap in that defense, but credit the Sun Devils have been strong in their tackles so far. Big body. Tanner Barnes with a carry, a little cut and carry there. Leroy spins it out. Might have found some space here to chase Bassani. He's looking to offload it, but takes it to ground and said things better of it. Josh Butler with a strong carry here. Breaks a couple tackles. Searching for the try line. Serge letting him play. Looks like might be a pocket here. Leroy Tatum. Has he found the try zone? He has. Leroy Logan Tatum with the try, making it 5-0 Toreros. What a fantastically strong start by the Toreros, keeping the ball, being very physical and direct, maybe something that Charlie Purden, head coach, has said to them early doors. Keep hold of the ball, keep recycling it, and going direct in pods of three. No one was on their own there, which was key for the Toreros to keep getting that ball back and actually offering the scrum half some good, clean ball. That's Mickey O'Leary directing things very nicely at nine for the Toreros. Great to see Logan Tatum. I remember watching him in the last game I commentated on last season, and I was really impressed by him. Real strong performer. Scotty must be a bit of a favorite here at Toreros. Absolutely. The boys love him. Directing the play on the field there, leading by example, and Smithers here. Michael Lewis will look to convert the try, adding two points onto the lead for the Toreros. Kick is up, and he splits the post beautifully. 7-0 Toreros as the Sun Devils will kick the ball back. Did have some good flashes of uh, strong defense from the Sun Devils here as we're going to have a replay of the try. Yeah, the, before this is some real quality t um, tackling from uh, ASU, has got to be said. But as you can see, no one's going on their own there. A final push over the line from his teammate, uh, teammates and Tatum gets over for the opening score. But it looks like it's going to be a real physical game, Scott. Both sides are flying in, both sides of the ball. So... You know, yes, Toreros have got an early, early lead going. I think um, if we look back, probably more as to why the Sun Devils didn't really exit terribly well outside of, outside of their 22. Found themselves under some pressure. They're now trying to put that pressure onto the Toreros. Reset kick goes to Hoovel. Out to Danny Sir on the wing, looking for somebody. Takes the ball to ground. O'Leary spins the ball out to Josh Butler, making a good, strong run between a few tacklers here and rucked well by his support, preventing that poach from happening. A late counter ruck puts the ceiling rucker on his toilet. The ball is sent back. A little bit of pressure here by the Sun Devils. A left looking to look, make a man miss. Makes two men miss, as a matter of fact. But the Sun Devils stay aggressive on defense here. It's a war in these rucks, Will. 
Big Nick Davies at number four for the ASU, the captain. He looks like he's going to a physical guy trying to cause some damage there. Pocket for Lewis. He scans the space and kicks it high back to the Sun Devils. Caught well there by the danger man on the wing. Sporting the headband as well today. Like to see that from Evgeny. As the Sun Devils are now going to be attacking near midfield. Broken tackle there by Boa Rend. Bringing the ball into Torero's territory here as the Sun Devils look to make them pay. A good chop tackle. I think that was Dom Martinez. Kind of trying to keep his wits about him after that one. That's a big body there. Sun Devils attack another phase. Trying this right side of the defense. Another good tackle there. Staying low on these big bodies. ASU playing with the advantage still from the referee. I think it was a no arms uh, tackle from the Torero. So have the option now to try and spin it wide. Switch play there by the, uh, by the Sun Devils, but it might have been poached. It is not poached. Playing multiple consecutive phases here. A grubber kick through, collected by the Toreros, and advantage must have been over. Must have been over. Smithers now looks at the pocket again, looking for space, looking for clearance, looking for touch, finds all three. So it looks like it's going to be a uh, directing straight up the middle kind of game for the ASU side. Some big carrying forwards there. I mentioned about the captain, Nick Davies, at four, but also 12. Caden Ellison coming on that switch ball, clearly trying to get him into the game. Looks like a strong ball carrier for the Sun Devils. I think, though, overall, the Torreros would be pretty happy with how they defended that passage of play, Scott. There's some good chop tackles at times and getting off the line. I know Charlie Purden definitely has an emphasis of line speed, really putting the opposition under pressure, forcing mistakes. So the first line out is up and won by Tall Carter Carlson. And a strong collision here in midfield. However, we have a penalty. There may have not have been an attempt to wrap. The Sir is looking to have a conversation here as well. That was quite the collision there, Will, yeah? That was, and unfortunately for the, ter the Toreros, that's unfortunately in rugby, that's very illegal. So as he comes in here, it's a great terms of shot on the thigh in terms of the, uh, the, the uh, body position of it, but you need to wrap your arms. You need to be able to get your arms around the player. Otherwise, that's just a shoulder hit, no arms tackle, and unfortunately, yes, he has been rightfully, I should say, actually, yellow carded. I think that's the number seven for the Toreros, Martinez. That is Dom Martinez as the tackle player will be getting tended to by USD's world-class training staff. Uh, Hamid is taking a look there. It might have been some contact to the knee slash thigh area. Uh, ankles getting looked at as well just after that nasty collision. Wouldn't surprise me if uh, good old-fashioned known as a cork, a dead leg straight into the thigh. And uh, everything was great about that defense from Torreros, but you've got to wrap your arms. Uh, as soon as you make contact, good body height from Martinez from the Torreros, but you've got to be able to wrap your arms around the thighs, around the legs. Otherwise, there's an illegal tackle, and they now find themselves, Torreros, with a man down and a penalty for ASU, what, 40, 40 meters out. So this is just go looking back a little bit of where the Torreros attack with good success. Some good passing uh, channels, getting it out to the width, keeping hold of the ball. That was the thing that really impressed me. So as look, you can see there, some big hits going in from ASU, but the recycling was quality from the Toreros. And O'Leary, the scrum half, just organizing play, sending in Tatum's, a great carry, great support over for the first try of the game. And Toreros just leading, but now they're under the pump. Just in terms of this defense as well from ASU, they're doing well, getting off the line, keeping hold of the ball. I was saying earlier about trying to get their big runners into the game. Lovely work from the 10, getting himself good evasive work. It's going to be a competitive game today, and unfortunately we see the 8 for ASU. I believe that's um, McKay Seagal. Is that how you probably say it? Apologies if I haven't got that right, but yeah, clearly a bad dead leg. And it looks like number 21, Bronson Smith, will be one big body replacing another. Seeing his first action of the day. He looks like a young a young lad just looking at his face. Or will it be Will Quinn? I believe it is Will Quinn, Will. 
coming in to replace. There might be some uh, swaps around in the offensive pack to accommodate this change. The Toreros will be down shorthanded to 14 for the next 10 minutes. It's a good reminder to uh, confirm that the official time is kept on the field by the sir, not necessarily by the score bug. Uh, by TDX as this restarting line out is overthrown in the pack and nudge forward by Michael Lewis but won and collected by ASU Evgeny on the wing bringing that ball back to almost the original line out location as the Sun Devils are collecting the ball for another phase of play here looking to get out the ball out to the centers Toreros have knock advantage I believe as they have the ball as well Collected by Butler and just kind of flopped forward, trying to clean this thing up. O'Leary spins out to Brandon Guaducci, out to O'Leary. And brought out onto the wing beautifully in a nice set piece. That's Hoovel out there, the fullback, out on the wing, cutting back in for the ruck. O'Leary's looking for the ball to come back in the feed. Spun out for another phase of play. That's big body Tanner Barnes here. Punching his way through that defensive line past the game line for the Toreros. Josh Butler making a nice carry again. O'Leary spins it once more out to Lewis. Lewis looks for space and nudges it out. Arizona State fullback kicks the ball into touch. It will be USD line out about 10 meters out from the 22 of the Sun Devils, Will. Yeah, and I actually, I quite like that tactic from the fly-half, Lewis of Torreira. trying to poke the ball in behind, turn the opposition, and put some pressure on ASU. Forcing that, let's be honest, pretty much a slice kick. Giving ASU this attacking line out now, just, what, 30, 30 metres out from the ASU try line. be interesting to see. We talked about set-piece before the game, how they go in this area, and how they start. Tatum is set for the throw. Dustin Braun is up. The mall is formed. The mall is contested. The mall drives forward for the Toreros. Punch back slightly, and the ball is brought back to Logan Tatum. As the sir, I think he's been given penalty advantage to the Toreros here to play with after a successful line out maneuver. Advantage is taken. And was that a collapsing the mall call, Will? Yes, yeah, so uh, in rugby with a more, you've got to either try and bring it down straight away with the ball is still with the second row as he comes down. Or unfortunately what happened there, they set, well, great for work from the Torero, setting up that more and ASU on the back foot. And whether it was intentional or not, they brought that more down, penalized by the referee. And, and uh, the Toreros just make their way inside the 22. Another good attacking opportunity. I would say if I was Toreros and their playmaker call, Go for another driving line out now. See what they do here. It's set again. Looks to be similar to what we had last time. Exactly right. You are, Will. As this driving mall is back for the Toreros looking to drive their way closer and closer to the Sun Devils try zone. As we see some arms over the top here as the Sir spotted it. We're playing on here. As we have a little bit of a bedlam going on. What do we have? We have the balls brought down to the turf. USC's retained possession, and they're looking to bring this ball in about five meters out from the try zone. Dustin Braun brings the ball back. Tackle is made, but a penalty was given perhaps for a high tackle there. So the Trails will have a very good opportunity here, about 10 meters from the try zone, Will. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to tap and go. Oh, will we see American rugby tactics at its finest here, Will? Well, they're setting something up. I'm intrigued myself here, Scott. A good old-fashioned pick and run it straight up the guts. Here it is. Tanner Barnes with a hard crash into three defenders for the Sun Devils. Stood up and brought back to O'Leary. Spins the ball out to Josh Butler, who may be getting carried 10 meters up in the air. He's up there. They're looking at the ref. The ref says bring him down or it's a penalty. They don't. It is a penalty to the Toreros. Will they award a penalty try here, Will? A question, I'm just understanding from the referee what he's 
what he's calling for. So it looks as though there was a level of danger in not putting the player down in the correct format. You can hold the player up, but the, the legs were above his waist and not sure. I thought they were going to put him over the post there for a second, Will. <laughs> they nearly had the height. Reset by the Toreros there again. Tanner Barnes crashing in near the post for the try zone. It's a pick and it's a go by the Toreros. It's very hard to see who has the ball at this point. My apologies. Popped out to Brandon Guaducci on the one side there. Out to Smithers, out to Chase Bassan, a cut and a carry. Just They're need patience now, Toreros. Keep the ball tight. Make sure you're going in numbers. Don't get isolated. A pick and a punch. Another phase for the Toreros defended well by the Sun Devils here in desperation zone. A dive forward. Has he found the try zone? No, the ball is out and carried by Arizona State. So he, the ball popped out two times, unfortunately. However, it will be, I think there might be a penalty call here, Will. It's an exciting play there. It looked like the ball was unfortunately uh, knocked forward by USD just a meter or so from the try zone. I saw that number nine, Jacob Hurl, kind of sprung out from the back of the try zone, carried this thing out, a couple nice offloads, but unfortunately knocked into touch by ASU. But I think there might have been a penalty given at that point Yeah, I for think a tip tackle. We're still trying to understand what, what happened here. As if this is just close to the line. Oh, I think a little bit of white line fever, Scott. Mm. Thought he was already there. All right, yep, yeah, there's that tackle, the legal tackle. You cannot lift the legs above the waist. You do that and you tip the guy on his shoulder or a worse neck. That is an illegal tackle. That is why ASU have now got themselves a penalty. But the Terreras be disappointed. It was really promising. Their patience in the attack. They went in numbers, picking around the fringes of the ruck. They're about a meter out, and I don't actually know who it was. It was Jackson Short giving a, oh, I, just a little giving a card as well. Oh, is that for the tackle? Well, someone was a little bit of white line fever for the Toreros, and in the end, that was the reason the ball got knocked on. And ASU find themselves inside the Toreros' half. You wouldn't have said that a couple of minutes ago. I would have really banked on Toreros getting another try. And I believe they're going to be up two men here, so the Toreros are down 15-13 right here. Look at this. This was earlier, <laughs> the, the carrying, so I believe... You can hold a player up in rugby to make sure that you can try and control the ball, get the ball back, but the legs were above his waist. You've got to have care of the person when making a tackle. Action back here at midfield for the Sun Devils, looking to carry, looking to exploit some of that space in the Terreros defense as they're playing two men down here in the middle of the first half of play. ASU spins the ball out to their flanker with a strong carry, but a stronger tackle, and now a little punch through, blocked down by Danny Sir. ASU center looks to punch his way through. Another phase here. The Toreros definitely look light on the on the defending wing here just because of the sheer lack of numbers. But the ball, fortunately for the Toreros, knocked on there. So we'll have a USD scrum. They just needed to recycle that ball. You can see in there, big number three coming in. Unfortunately, spills it. Good tackle from the Toreros. But if that got recycled, the Toreros... Terreros are in a world of problem in that edge. And they're going to be in a world of problem now for the next however few minutes with, a, as you say, a couple of men in the bin. Not ideal. So now the Terreros have the ball back inside their own half. They're going to have to try and exit into what is, Scott, a little bit of a win they're facing. Absolutely, Will. And you can see, yes, at least a couple more minutes in the penalty there is a strong ASU scrum forces a quick feed over the head of Lewis, but... Lewis will be finding touch with that kick. And we're going to be looking to see if Don Martinez is allowed to re-enter the game after serving his 10-minute penalty. Doesn't look like he's quite getting waved on yet. So we'll have an ASU line out here, Will, in good attacking territory. Yeah, and a really strong scrum. Again, a man in the, in the bin. Sim bin for Torreira is in that forward pack. I mean, we've already mentioned how big and sizable this ASU team are. So the fact that they've got an extra forward, I would question they're going to try and use that to their advantage. Maybe another drive this time for them off this lineup. Right, you are, as it's a nice lineup one. That's Carter again, looking to set them all up, making the Terreros defend while shorthanded. Terreros are equal to the challenge, but the ball is poached out the back and carried around for a nice game. 
looking to attack the wing here is a good cut by the flanker. Number six, Cole Masias. Good cut and carry there for himself. Ball's given out in the next pod for a hooker. And looks like they're playing a little one-out rugby here. Nothing too fancy, just straightforward attack. You try to try to attack us, try to bring us down if you can. A good dummy there. Trojans are desperately trying to defend their try zone. Down two men here. A pick and go by the nine. We'll probably have some rumbles here, Will, with the scrum half at the bottom of the ruck. Well, those big bodies just look to pick and punch through the Toreros defense. No, actually, it's spun out. There's a lot of space out on the left-hand side now for ASU. They can get it there. Danny Sir desperately calling for defensive help. The fullback is up as well. Has this ball been poached? The poach is there. Unfortunately for the Toreros, the ruck is strong and spun back out for ASU as they're looking to get their ball into the try zone, and they have four. ASU, that is number 14, Cooper Baines with a try. Absolutely deserved. ASU did well. They kept hold of the ball this time. It was only, a, in all honesty, it was only going to be a matter of time. Torero really under the pump with those two men in the sim bin. I believe Martinez is now finally coming back onto the field, giving them at least 40 men on the, on the pitch. But it's just smart, well, you know, well controlled, keeping hold of the ball. It's actually the, 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 the 10 for uh, ASU, who picked round the, round the fringe, and it ends up, I don't even know how it managed to end up in number 14, Cooper Baines's hand, but he just sort of walked over the line. Torreira's really stretched in the end, and the ASU side will be very happy to get that try. You always in rugby, when you've got a man advantage, you need to make advantage of it on the scoreboard. They've done that. A chance now to level it up. Right, you are, Will. It currently sits as a 7-5 advantage for the Toreros, but the Sun Devils have a chance here to tie this at 7. Conversion kick is up. The flags are up, and we have a tie rugby game, 7-7. Here in approximately the 23rd minute. It might be a little bit below that for the injury stoppage. But we have a reset of this match, Will. ASU, again, they still have a man advantage, so there'll be question marks as to what they do now when they collect the ball from this restart. Again, for the viewers at home, there is this wind that goes across the pitch from left to right, as you can see on your screen. So in my bets, ASU will want to try and exit efficiently, get down and put pressure again on the Toreros inside their half. Lewis with another high reset. Shallow for the Sun Devils and a tackle there by Don Martinez, fresh out of the bin. Sun Devils ball here. First phase of play, there looks to be a poach on. Rucked and it's out. Second phase of play here, the fly half. That's going to be Bo Ren there with the carry. So Sun Devils look to, and unfortunately, I think they might have knocked it there. They have. It will be USD scrum. About 15 meters in attacking territory. You know what, Scott? Unfortunately, it's such a... As a player, when you've got a man advantage, you definitely want to see what's in front of you. There'll be space on the field somewhere. However, the last thing ASU needed to do was put themselves under pressure. Inside their half, they really needed to put that back onto the Toreros. Inside their half to put the pressure on them. But they found themselves just forcing something, and it's now Torero scrum, and Martinez is back, so they got a full eight-man pack. Very powerful Sun Devil scrum there. It's driving... The Toreros back a bit, looking for the feed, but unfortunately for the Toreros, they're all going to find themselves on their own wallets. And it's going to be ASU ball, I believe. A little bit difficult to see amongst the Bedlam, but I believe, yes, the 10 has the ball for the Sun Devils. And here comes big boy Carter around that messy ruck for his carry. Sun Devils seeking space, but unfortunately for them, I believe the ball is knocked again and re-knocked by the Toreros. So it will be another Torero scrum. See if they can secure this one, Will. Yeah, the 10, Bo Arend, um, Arend, sorry if I pronounced that wrong again. Apologies, but um, looks like a skillful player, good footwork, but he needs to look up. There's a lot of space in the backfield um, that the Toreros are naturally giving up because of their man in the bin. So, again, kind of an unforced error and just pressure on themselves, the Sun Devils. Toreros, although, let's be honest, that last scrum wasn't positive for them. 
They need to just get the ball in and get it out. Channel one, as they call it. Absolutely. Scrum half. Get it in and get it out. Let's see if they can do that here. O'Leary feeds the ball in, looking for a quick scrum. Looking to dive into that scrum and dig it out if he needs to. He does exactly that. Spun out to Sir. Looking for space. Founds a little half gap. And he's got an advantage here. Looks to pick and pop. And he has done that to danger man Devin Hoovel. The senior from Chicago, Illinois, is brought down about five to six meters from that try zone. USC is going to need to punch it through the big bodies if they want to score five points. A flat ball carry there, and now a counterattack here. O'Leary looks, dummies, and runs into a double tackle. Terreros retained possession here as O'Leary is looking for his option. There's a lot of backfield movement here for the Terreros as Josh Butler goes over the top. They spin it to the right, Terreros, and they're walking in. An overlap is spotted. An advantage is given, potentially a penalty advantage. It's a strong line. A nice unders line is brought in. Terrells will be given advantage for, I believe it was an offside penalty there, Will. I think, yep, something like that. Maybe even hands in the ruck. No, it was hands in the ruck. Handling the referee the ruck. has given the Terreros, again, I state it, have got a man in the bin, in the sim bin. They're going to try and just tap and go again. Let's see what they have here. American rugby tactics at its finest. A tap and a go. Tanner Barnes is punched through contact, runs into four big Sun Devil bodies. O'Leary picks the ball out and a little deception there. That's ten, that's going to be Dustin Brown there on that run. We're trying to go quick, says the coach. Go quick, go quick. Get him, but going to beat off their feet. Sun Devil's equal to the challenge there. Ball's given out back to Nate Left on the wing, trying to dance his way out, but avoid the try, the uh, touch line. Commentator shocking for position of the screen as there's a strong Arizona State tackle. Possession retained by the Terreros. No, excuse me. What do we have here? It looks like another penalty for the Terreros. Sun Devils captain now is getting spoken to, and it looks as though someone's going in the bin. Is that number 13 for the um, ASU, Rene? Potentially for repetitious penalties. Another hands in the ruck situation. So multiple penalties has resulted in now Simbin for the for the Sun Devils. So we're now 14 apiece in terms of players on the pitch. And the Terreros, the Terreros will have a chance to score. So as you can see, great defense from ASU. They didn't need to try and put their hands in. So at this point here, great counter ruck that comes in. But then that at that point there, the ruck is formed. You can't just go in and pick it up. Penalty against... The, uh, the Sun Devils and Terreros have a line up, what, five meters out? Yes, Lewis up for the, the touch line there. The Sun Devil defense has been very stiff, especially near their own try zone. Choosing not to contest the line out to sack. To sack that, there's another penalty advantage. The Terreros must take advantage here. I believe it was another uh, pull down for the mall. Collapse. The Terreros are desperately seeking their way into this try zone. Some deception there, but I believe that's Michael Lewis finding a little half gap in the defense and finding the try zone to give the Terreros a 12-7 lead will. <laughs> i tell you what, as a former fly half, there is no way I'm finding myself anywhere near that ruck. So I'm not even sure how Michael Lewis managed to get himself in and amongst the forwards, but at but a deceptive little dummy and go from your number 10. Oh, I tell you what, I didn't score many tries in my time, Scott, but there's a good reason because I would never be in that kind of position. <laughs> I ain't hanging around the big boys there. Let them do that donkey work. But right. Lewis jumps in, does the job, and the Toreros have found themselves with a try that puts them in the lead. And I just feel the ASU, it was their own problems, that inability to exit from their half after the kickoff when they had scored, found themselves a lot of pressure, or put themselves under a lot of pressure, and the Toreros have made good work of it. Lewis converting his own try. The kick is up, but will shade outside of the post, keeping the score where it is. As the Toreros set to receive the reset kick here approximately 29 minutes into the first half. ASU's having a little conference under the post still. Terreros are set, but... 
Some interesting tactics here. Just, uh, again, when you've got a man in the sim bin, you're down a player. Well, what do you want to do? A bit of time wasting to bring that clock down? And it looks like the second penalized player, Jackson Short, is back on the field as well. So it actually is a 15-14 man advantage for the Treros there. So perhaps you're right, Will. Perhaps that was a little bit of uh, time usage by the Sun Devils before this reset comes back up. Jacob Hurl reset for the Sun Devils. Kick is up. It's going into Don Martinez's arms. He's up. And a nice strong tackle there by the Sun Devils. Very straightforward defense, but unfortunately a failure to roll away by the tackler will give the Toreros a penalty. Yeah, there's a great tackle from Bo um, Arend, the number 10 from ASU. But you can't just lie the other side of the ball, stopping that ball coming out for the Torero. So, oh, is that coming towards us? Nearly. So. Lewis's kick finds touch over our heads and over the TVX camera and microphone. And ball might have been looking like it was coming into your... Well, look at this for a tackle. It's a great hit. But once he's made that tackle, he's got to roll away from the breakdown. He doesn't. Stops the ball from coming out. A penalty for the Toreros. Line out on the halfway. Tatum's throwing the line out. Finds Dustin Braun in the second pod there. And it's picked and poached around by Leroy. And a nice little deceptive play there, giving the ball fed back into Nate left the winger. And the Toreros are rolling up, looking for some more carry here by Dustin Braun over the game line. Strong carry. O'Leary spins it out to Lewis, out to the Sir, out to Hoovel, and again to Sam Carlson, the flanker out near the wing. Some dynamic play here by the Toreros as O'Leary spins it back now towards us. Punched through and latched into this contact here. No shortage of that today on this Sunday. Dustin Braun looks to carry this ball out through two defenders. Toreros, another phase, dummy by Chase Bassan and knocked, unfortunately. Sun Devils playing with knock advantage here. Fantastic defense by number 20 there. McDonald for ASU came off his wing, just sort of shut down the play. I'm not even sure that the Torreros 12, Basson, saw him coming. Caught him off guard, got the turnover, knocked it on. ASU get the ball back. And that game was looking promising, though, for the Toreros with that man advantage that they've got. If they just keep hold of the ball, have the speed of ball. I'm liking the way that O'Leary is managing things at scrum half for the men in white and blue. But unfortunately, that forced error. ASU have the ball. Chance to see this powerful Arizona State scrum in action. Some heads up above in the front row, that so the sir. Blows that up, says, we're not going to scrum that way. Let's try to reset it all. I'll come watch your side. Sir, change the side of the scrum here. The heavies will reset. Bit of an awkward set, but here we are. Sun Devils looking to wheel and push this scrum. It's a messy ball. I think it's anybody's ball. The ball was out, I believe. It looks like the Toreros have found it. Indeed, they have. Against all odds, it's a Torero win in that powerful scrum by ASU. Picked by Josh Butler here. Three men bring him down. Toreros look for an overlap. Ball spun out to Brandon Guadici. Popped down to Tanner Barnes. Lewis spins the ball out. It's knocked by Chase Bassan, unfortunately. Advantage. Just wanting to get that last pass away from Besson, and it would have been an absolute killer pass as well if he did. Man overlap. Good quality defense, though, from ASU. Getting up quickly, putting the skill level of the Toreros under pressure, forcing another mistake. They just need to get themselves out of their half. I've got to say, I wasn't really sure as to the decision-making at that scrum time. I would say that the uh, ASU front forwards definitely had the advantage in the in the shove so they'll be looking to try and maybe squeeze out a penalty or at least just get themselves out of their half scrum, scrum is reset here the ball is somewhere in the mix here spun out by the Sun Devils and a grubber kip through the defensive line of the turrets collected by Devin Hoovel near, near midfield he's cut back in he's found some space here Hoovel looking for someone to offload to but will find the turf instead O'Leary spins it out to Nate left on the wing and out to Daniel Sir. Near the touchline himself has he been brought into touch. 
I believe the flag has gone up. We will have a line out to ASU. Some great last stitch defending there from ASU. Interesting choice of kick here with the grubber. Great work from the fullback, Devin Ho Hooville. Scoops it up, gets on the front foot, move it to the right direction for sure, but it's this last ditch covering tackle by the ASU winger. That's great work. Oh, that might be a, I'm sorry, that might be a Terrero's uh, Terrero. line out. Yes. I did not see that little, little grubber kick of his own by Daniel Sir. It looked like it went off red, so we'll have a blue line out. Indeed, we do up in the front pod to Sam Carlson, and there's a drive here for the Terreros, approximately 15 meters from the try zone. Small is driving on, and now it's down to the turf. Unfortunately, it was unplayable by the Terrero, so it will be a scrum to ASU. I believe that was the call, Will. Yep, so the ball wasn't able to come out on the Terrero's side, which means it's the advantage of ASU, keeping that ball in the mall, not enabling it to come out. Scrum for Arizona State. We have only a few minutes left of the half, so again... Another chance for Arizona to get themselves, alleviate some pressure. I mean, much needed needed to alleviate some pressure as they've been camped in this sort of their own 30 meters area for a while now. Arizona State will feed the ball into the scrum and perhaps look to exit their danger zone. A wheeled scrum in a pocket set. Do we have a kick? We have a low driving kick. Hoover will collect this once more. He has some options to counterattack here. Chooses to run out, cut back in, and is tackled. Ball may have been knocked. Ball was unfortunately knocked again by Chase Besson. That's his third in as many uh, opportunities, unfortunately, for him. He needs to just catch the next one. Well, what do you think about this? How do you, how do you overcome? You've, you've knocked the ball on a couple of times. As a skilled player yourself, how do you overcome this? Well, you need your teammates around you to really let you know it's next job. You've got to put it behind you, not let it, not dwell on it too much. I think Basson is clearly someone who's taken his chance at 12 today, wanting to prove himself. So, you know, he doesn't need to put himself under pressure. But it was a good attacking, counter-attacking play from Hoover that got them into this position. But hey, look, let, let, let's be fair to Basson. He's, he's tried to get it in there, tried to get the ball out quickly, and it's just fell away from him in the end. We have an enthusiastic sub running on the field for ASU. I believe it's Rasa Yagmai coming in to join the scrum. He's happy to do so. Ball is won back by Arizona State. Another pocket is formed, but it looks like they'll be carrying this one out. A late pop to the wing out there. That's nice. Another carry by the nine, and a grubber through. He's got some space here, seemingly holding hands with Nate left down the field, but finds the turf. Ball collected by the Terrells. O'Leary scanning his options, giving a little time for his offense to join him and kick back up high for the Sun Devils. Collected here by the fullback number 15, Graytham Ferguson. Breaks a tackle. And he'll be joined by his defenders here. Big body, the captain number four, Nick Davies. Another face for the Sun Devils here, looking to spin it out wide. A dummy and a cut. Logan Tatum forcing the second attempt on the tackle. Brings his man to the turf. Another set here by ASU. Strong run by Pierce. Arizona State now punching a little bit closer to the try zone. Strong chop tackle by Dom Martinez, and he's looking to poach it himself. ASU will re recycle. It looks like they have numbers on the left here, Will. They absolutely do. They just need to get it there. Someone needs to speak to them. No, they're going right no. instead. <laughs> Communication lacking. ASU, you've got it on the left-hand side. Go. Still on left for the Sun Devils, although still close to the line. Keeping it tight, fair enough. Still moving forward. Lots of bodies in the middle of the field here. Will as a pick on the other side by Carter Davies. Excuse me, Nick Davies, the captain. Trying to punch the ball into the pay dirt for the Sun Devils, but a good counter push by the Toreros. 
Do they have some space here? New, a good gang tackle there. That was Sam Carlson, I believe. Tanner Barnes, or no, that was Mac Johnson on the gang tackle. The sub is in, and he's found the try zone. Try Arizona State. I believe that was Rasa Yagmai, the new sub wearing number 23. Apologies if that incorrect, but good pressure there by the Sun Devils, Will. Yeah, what did I know? I was screaming for them to go left, but they actually kept it tight, kept together, kept recycling the ball, and the big man goes over for a well earned try. So some brilliant chop tackling. Look at that. That is a perfect tackle from Martinez in comparison to his last one where he got sent off for, but just with that mountain of pressure that ASU built inside that 22 eventually just pays off even though the Toreros did put everything on the line they just were not able to stop this uh, big carry here from number 23 I believe that's well my sheet will Quinn but I don't think it is will Quinn who end up getting the try for Arizona State kicking conversion for the lead and they have the lead here will Towards the end of the first half, it is 14 to 12, Arizona State Sun Devils. Mixed half, really, from both sides. I mean, you could say Toreros and Patches that definitely were looking like the stronger of the bunch out there, but ASU just holding a little bit of composure, finally getting themselves inside the Torero half. I would say that's the thing they need to talk about at half time: is get yourself inside the Torero half. Don't muck around with it inside your own half. Absolutely a very straightforward attack by the Arizona State Sun Devils there, finding the try zone. Lewis here with a reset kick, goes shallow and high again. This is playable for Chase Basson, and he's gathered it. Now into making a punishing run of his own. Toreros are in good business here. Brendan Guiducci running a little bit east to west, but finding some space there around the edge. Another face for the Toreros, the ball is thrown over the head of Michael Lewis. But a nice skip pass out to Hoovel. Hoovel's brought down to the turf. Toreros have another phase of attack here, looking to bring it back left. Ball carriers punch through. On a strong latch carry there. Here's Josh Butler. O'Leary spins it out to Daniel Sir. Out to Chase Basson. Skipped over to Nate Left, but unfortunately for him. Dropped into touch, it'll be a line out to Arizona State. Just that last pass, forcing it. It might have been from the man Basson, who was so strong beforehand with his big run off the kickoff. Oh, yeah, just didn't look when he passed it. Everyone was a little bit too flat, and that's going to be the end of the half. Missed opportunity maybe for the Toreros right at the end, as ASU hold on 14 points to 12 at the end of halftime. Fortunately for the Toreros, yeah, as brilliant as that reset was for them just everything but the finish so they will not carry the they will bring that deficit into uh to the half 14 to 12. before we take a break we want to say a big thanks to usd rugby's exclusive live stream partner tvx video tvx video is committed to bringing you live local and emerging sports from san diego southern california and the southwest region if you like what we're doing make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe thanks for tuning in it is 14 to 12 arizona state we'll be back in just a bit on TVX Sports Video.
out every week starting this Thursday on the Rugby Network and everywhere you get your podcasts. All done? I'm not again, mate. Anyway, I told him, I want the Toyota Prius. That's the only car I'll drive. <laughs> oh, hi. We are back for second round, uh, second half action here. 14 to 12 Arizona State lead over the USD Toreros. Will, what do the Toreros need to do in the second half to regain the lead? Well, I think, in all honesty, they just need to not get that bit of white line fever. Just keep hold of that ball when they do have that territory in the second half and they'll get that territory from putting the ball using the wind which will be behind their backs going from left to right as you can see on screen and actually really putting the ball down the field putting ISU under pressure and I know it sounds so cliche and straightforward but they just need to keep hold of it because when they have done that and they've shown that in doing it in numbers they've done very well. Right you are Will I think that breeze is maybe picked up there's a, a little bit of a strong breeze carrying out from Tecolote Canyon here University of San Diego's campus and I think it's picked up at least where I stand, I'm feeling a little bit more of it, but um, don't quite have an anemometer with us today. Uh, but let's see if the tourists can make it, take advantage of that, that wind coming out. Charlie Purden's giving some, uh, some advice to his side here and the adjustments needing to be made. I think we're going to roll some highlights out here to you as well, Will. Yes, it started really well for the Toreros, moving the ball. And like I said, just before we uh, came to these highlights, just keeping hold of it, going in numbers, getting to the breakdown in numbers, and strong carrying, even though there's some strong defense from both sides, as you can see there. But patience is rewarded with points, and it was... Number, lo number two, Logan Tatum got over for Torero's first try. 7 nothing inside the first 10 minutes. Impressive start by the Toreros. But in the end, it was ASU who did manage to find themselves back into the game. They're going with the physical approach. But it was the number 10, Bo Arend, who managed to scoop through the middle, putting them under pressure. That was the yellow card. Bad challenge from Martinez. No arms in that tackle. And that's been a strong area for the Terraris. The set pieces look strong in both the line-out department. Uh, scrum struggle a little bit against ASU. A little interesting passage of play here. Held up, but illegally the referee deemed. And finally, at the end of this, well, that passage of play, ASU managed to get themselves on the scoreboard. Back into this game. It's a tough one today. It's a tough one. It's looking physical. Both sides of the ball. I cannot believe a fly half picked round the ruck and scored a try. Never have I seen that or haven't seen that in a while. Great work from Michael Lewis for the Toreros. Strong game by Logan Tatum, that hooker there. The boys have had their orange slices. Well, I think we're ready to get started in the second half here. It looks like Paul Habib has come in for Chase Besson at 12. Position that he's a little bit more acclimated to. Sir blows his whistle. The reset is up, and we are back live here on Manchester Field. Josh Butler collects the reset kick, breaks his first tackle, breaks his second tackle, and takes another couple of defenders with him. Brings the ball back to the 10 meter line. O'Leary spins the ball out to Dustin Brown, but then tackled down there is Logan Tatum. O'Leary spins back in the pocket for Michael Lewis, and a low driving kick is blocked by the Sun Devils. Sun Devils now will look to get form in their pods here. Let's look. I think they've, we saw a lot of one out rugby from them in that first half. Just one pass in that phase. And here is a little chip kick over. Smart. Find some space here. Hoovel's looking to gather this and find some counter space activity of his own. O'Leary spins the ball back to Lewis with another low kick, rubber kick, collected by ASU. 
and looking to spin, looking to spin, spins it out, and unfortunately, tackler Paul Habib in the game right there ready to meet him. Regathering here, it's a quick pop pass, but lost. Habib has his first carry for the Toreros, bringing a couple defenders along with him. Good gain for Habib there into the game for the second half. O'Leary looking to bring this momentum along. Brandon Guaducci out there through the two tacklers of ASU. Looking to offload the ball to Tanner Barnes, but he's wrapped up and brought down to the turf. O'Leary knocks the ball, unfortunately. It'll be ASU scrum. Well, look at the Toreros. I mean, really frustrating. Really promising getting themselves on the front foot inside the ASU 22. If that offload could just get away at the end, they so they turn over the ball. Great to see Paul Habib back on the field. I'm sure he had a lot of value in the second half. And this work here, getting in behind ASU, was crucial. Great carry, busting through. If this ball could just get away, oh, it could have been a try, but. Very good defense from the Sun Devils in the end. And I think it was a knock-on that was forced probably by two Terreras players clashing into each other. So ASU with the scrum. They are looking to try and get outside of their 22. Scrum was reset by the sir. He saw something he didn't like on the far side. He's going to plant himself there and just keep a close eye on things here. Very powerful, very capable scrum by ASU. But USD is looking to hold their own against that. Boys are fired up here. It's ASU scrum, the feed is in. Ball is knocked, unfortunately, by Jackson Short. It'll be another scrum to ASU. Another scrum, and that was the big sound of testosterone, as you could hear through the screen. Everyone is pumped for this one. That's, the game's really in the balance, Scott. 14-12, ASU, and they look like they've got that ascendancy in the scrum, pushing forward hard. If I was a scrum half for uh, ASU, I'd leave that ball in, try and get a penalty out of this, because Torreira really are on the back foot. I think I saw some of their cleats just gliding over the turf there, Will. <laughs> Push was so powerful. They do it again. Jacob Hero feeds the ball in. Picked out the back. Some space for the Sun Devils. Ball may have been knocked. Indeed, we will have our third consecutive scrum here, Will. Starting the half, both teams, unfortunately, a few errors. Just getting back into the game, maybe. It's interesting that ASU, as we talked about before, there is this win that is going... They're going into it, so it's a little bit harder to kick the ball away and find good ground, good territory. So running, understandably, running from their own half, but at the same time, if you do put yourselves under pressure and you get an error like that, it gives the ball back to the Torero team in a strong position. I always loved it. Scrum in the middle of the field, attack either side, and Paul Habib, who's just come on, number 22 in your picture, I'd like to see him get his hands on the ball. First, the Toreros, we need to win the scrum, and they do so very quickly. Here is Habib, as advertised. Brought down by Pop back to O'Leary, who recycles around, and Jackson Short brings that ball down into touch. O'Leary is playing quickly here. Tackle there to Josh Butler. Brings a couple of defenders with him. Penalty here for the Toreros for possibly a high tackle. So interesting here, Will, would the Toreros look to gain the lead with a penalty kick or will they keep the ball and go for the try? Relatively forward, straight three points maybe on offer, but they decide to kick the corner. The mall for the Toreros actually has been pretty strong. I, I've said before, I think Logan Tatum's having a fantastic game at hooker in the white and blue and therefore got an option to throw into the lineup. Good, strong ball carries. Met with some big hits, but getting over that gain line's key. Getting the momentum going, staying on top of the opposition, and that's what happens. You force, you force ASU into position when they give away a penalty. USD lineout converts again. And some pretty clean set pieces from the Toreros on the sideline, at least. Rolling mall, and Logan Tatum has this ball poached off the side, and he's bringing some people with him towards this try zone. ASU defense stiffens up near the tri-zone. 
Josh Butler with another carry. He's getting contested for the ball. Has he retained possession or is it lost? We have a try against all odds, Will. <laughs> I don't know how that ball got to, it, to the floor. I thought it was very well defended by ASU. I really thought they might have held uh, the Terreros man up, but they managed to get it on the deck. And that's an important try. So the more it was Logan Tate, and it just breaks off the side here. Strong game he's had, as Great I mentioned carry. again. Great carry, staying on top. As I said, getting in behind the opposition, you've got to try and stay on top in numbers. And whatever happens there, which we cannot see on the screen, Scott, the referee saw it and ends up being given a try. I'm going to credit Josh Butler with the try there. He was the last guy I saw on the ground. Um, but just, uh, you know, 30, 31 men on the field. One ball, completely concealed. Sir converts that try, making it 19-14 Toreros here. Important kick that. They obviously turned down the three points, which was relatively in front of the post. Went to the corner, and it paid off. Paid off for the Toreros. Pressure led to points. Another try. Third of the game, the 19.14 lead. Although this, this is really still up for grabs, let's be honest. ASU... I see if they can get themselves inside the Terreros half and keep hold of the ball. they got really strong pack of forwards. Really want to try and build them into the second half. Right you are, Will. Jacob Hurl tests the ball. Looking to reset here for his Sun Devils. A little bit of a shank kick there, but up to Logan Tatum. Collected and brought down. USC looks to re-attack. Looks like there's a pocket set here for Daniel Sir. Looks like he's been taking over kicking responsibilities at 10 for the Toreros. The ball finds turf. It's rolling towards the touch line. Collected by the fullback. Redistributed in. And it looks like the Toreros have been very fortunate in this exchange. Now pinning ASU deep into their own territory. Will they look to exit? A pocket is formed for the Sun Devils. Low pass comes in and is kicked up high for the Toreros to collect. And unfortunately knocked there by Torero number five, so this will be a scrum advantage to ASU. Maybe they'll look to kick again. A box kick from Jacob Hurl. Finds Nate Leff and will play on here in Manchester Field. Leff runs into a strong tackle by ASU. USC has this ball in a good attacking territory here. I think this is Brandon Guiducci. The nice carry. USC's knocking on the door here. Short side attack, and Nate Left oh, looking for the wing. Lovely hands. He has found a try in the corner there for USD, Will. Wow, it was Paul Habib, number 22 for the Toreros, with a lovely set of quick hands, putting his man, giving him that try. It's a fantastic assist. But that whole passage of play was and started by a brilliant exit from the Toreros. As you can see, the wind there, it's so hard now for ASU to exit. Keeps in play, the, the winger from... The, uh, this the was Nate left here in his first carry. And then look at this hand. This is Paul Habib, in and out. Now that is an assist. Two quick tries here for the Toreros to start the second half. Bit but shocking to the Arizona State Sun Devils. As, as you said, Will, that Canyon Breeze is just hanging that ball up for the Sun Devils a bit. As the conversion kick hits off the crossbar and goes through <laughs> Lewis with a gentle doink off the crossbar. And it falls in the favorable side for the Toreros for two points, 24-14. That, that could be a very important kick. I think Charlie Purden, head coach of the Toreros, would be delighted how his side managed to get themselves back into that game. Look at this. Bang off the crossbar. It lands the other side as a kicker. Oh, relief. But Toreros, they needed to focus on what they did before. Set the ball, get it down into the opposition's half because it is such a hard ask for ASU to exit into this breeze. Hurl resets deep to Daniel Sir, collected and tackled. Rolls over and over. It will be USD ball retained here. Pocket set for Michael Lewis here. Toreros looking to kick and use this win to their advantage. Collected well by Grantham, Grantham Ferguson back in the 15th position. Tackled by Nate Left. USC strategy here is pretty clear here, uh, Will. Just pin that ball back. Pin, 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 pin. Bing, 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 bing. 
But the Sun Devils, very strong phase here. Nice strong carry and offload. Another phase of play here for Hurl. High throw, high catch, and a good tackle by Brandon Guiducci. Sun Devils reset here is the try score number 23, Rasa. Another phase of play for the Sun Devils coming out towards us here. Paul Habib, the super sub, tackle and poach attempt, but sealed well by Sun Devils. Keep looking for space here, looking for space here. Big body, the captain, Davies, brought to the turf. Turos are equal to the challenge here. Ball is spun out, and another good tackle. That's Dustin Braun behind the gain line. Another phase here, looking for space, looking for support, looking for their options. A very, very strong tackle there. That might have been Josh Butler. Sun Devils make a little minimal gain there, but they're playing a little bit backwards here after a couple phases. Very aggressive and strong defense by the Toreros here. Just pushing them back, the Toreros. Meters by meters, it's all in this defense. Bro, Captain Davies, strong carry. tackle, boom, no super for you as he sheds a Torero defender. But there's Mickey O'Leary against all odds. He's given up about 100 pounds in that matchup, but is credited with the tackle there. Number five, Carter Carlson. Gaining a lot of that turf back for the Sun Devils here. And the kick is up. Is there space there here? There is. There's a lot of it. And the ball bounces back for the Toreros and is collected there. Now the Toreros have a, an opportunity to counterattack, and they will do exactly that. Nate left the danger man on the wing. Is tackled into touch near midfield. So it will be a Sun Devil throw into the lineup. Boa Rend, the fly half, number 10 for ASU, saw a big pocket of space. He kicked the ball into it. I actually thought it was a really good kick, but the problem with a rugby ball on turf, Scott, it can bounce anywhere, and it was very unfavorable to the Sun Devils. Landed, I don't know how, in, in the Torero's hand. They managed to get away down that wing, relieving the pressure. But ASU just finding a little bit of confidence now in the second half. It's like Dom Martinez has come off for the Toreros and Dylan Jovens come in. The throw into the lineout is not straight by the Sun Devils, so it will be USD's ball with the option to go for a lineout or a scrum. Something tells me, my rugby intuition tells me, they're going to go for the lineout here. I would say it's a wise call. Logan Tatum's been throwing the ball very well, like a dartboard, just finding the bullseye. So get it, get the men up there and let him get, let him find it. Just let him put it in. And there you go. Commentator's curse. <laughs> Rossi collects the ball for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Toreros are forced to defend a few phases of attack here near midfield. Ball's recycled out. Tackle at the gain line for USD. Defense folds over the ruck. A dummy switch. A dummy and a tackle there. They found, their, found a poach there, but unfortunately for them, this ball is a little messy here, but collected by the Sun Devils, tackled by Josh Butler. USC will look to defend again. Nice little tip pass there, but tackle again right here at the 50-yard line of the football field. Desperate tackle by Devin Hoovel and successfully poached by Josh Butler, earning the penalty for the Toreros. Jacob Hurl for the Sun Devils, a scrum half. Really, really light footwork. He's, he's quick around that fringe. Torero's managed to just get... That's a great kick. Torero's just put them, had, had themselves under pressure. They managed to get a great turnover. Look at that. Great work from Hurl, the scrum half for ASU. Darts his way around the pitch. And in the end, that is a fantastic turnover from Josh Butler. Daniel Sir, the accounting major, sophomore from Portland, Oregon there, with a great kick to find touch. Wasn't really a lot of space, but using that canyon breeze, as we have another sub, I believe, for the ASU Sun Devils. Did not see who came into the game, but I do see that Will Quinn, I believe, came out. His shift is now complete. As the Trevors look to win this lineup. Ball is up to Dustin Brown and one successfully. Picked around the back, a little set piece deception again by the Toreros, but 
a strong tackle there, bringing Logan Tatum down into the turf. Josh Butler finds some space and soft shoulders out there in the defensive lineup. Josh Butler still carrying this ball. May not have been held in the tackle as we're playing. Kill the man with the ball here in Manchester Field, just jumping onto him from all angles. Technically, you think this is a mall. Again, brought in, made unplayable, so it will be ASU scrum. ASU did well to hold that up because it was the ascendancy from the Toreros. Two big carries, one from Logan Tatum and then the next from Josh Butler. Probably two of Torero's best players on the pitch coming to the forefront, giving them their side front foot ball, but just getting held up, unfortunately, allows the ASU to have a scrum. They've been dominant in this area, so you like to think they can maybe get a penalty out of this. Makes it easier to exit. So much easier to exit. Toreros are holding their own in the scrum. The ball is brought back and thrown back into the pocket, but no exit kick is coming. Oh, that's, oh. Lovely set of hands there to prevent a knock on. Caught that one with his fingernails, I believe. Another phase of play for the Sun Devils here. He's isolated, but a interesting poach attempt will retain the ball for the Sun Devils. Big body here, rumbling run. Big fella Isaiah Fadigoni. Looks like a kick is coming here. Held up in that canyon breeze and unfortunately might have been knocked, but we're playing on in Manchester Field here. Ball is brought out to Nate Left on the wing. Sheds a tackler, carries another man with him. Very strong carry there. Spun out wide, difficult to see. I think it's Logan Tatum there carrying the ball in. The Toros have advantage, see if they can take advantage of that. Tanner Barnes gives the ball back, and fortunately the ball finds turf. There's advantage over. Must be. Hoovel and Jackson Short trying to wrestle this man to the ground. Danger man of Yanni Gavril Das, unfortunately, is holding on to the ball there in a bailout penalty to the Toreros, Will. Wow, Paul Habib, I did say when he came on, I noticed this guy last season had a very strong year for the Toreros. He's really added massive value. Great turnover. That's his second turnover I've seen already in the second half from Habib. Set up the try as well with a quick pair of hands. So he's, he's a talisman, number 22 for the Toreros. Great to see him on the field. As you can see, great little run from ASU. But bang over the ball. Nice wide base. Release the player. That absolutely legal in what he's done there. And the referee rightly has given the penalty to Torero. They get themselves, I think now, Scott, inside the ASU half. There's so many lines on this pitch. There are a lot of lines on this sure pitch. Where, where we are. <laughs> so it can be a little confusing. There's multiple colors and lines, everything like that. But as we have it, this is a strong run. That's Dylan Joven. I think he's close to the try zone for the Toreros. Has he put the ball down? It will be a goal line drop. I believe the ball was held up as decided by the Sir. Yep, that's going to be a goal line dropout. There was nothing confusing about that play from the Toreros. Unlike the lines, it was straight drive up the middle. And here it is. Going quickly where there are the Sun Devils with a nice high boot out of their try zone. Jackson Short linking up with his, his backs here. That's Daniel Sir out on the wing. He's got Nate left out to his left. Throws it behind him and into touch. Just didn't need to pass that. Just didn't need to pass that. Great defense. I've got to give it to both sides. They are flying into it, these college boys. Space is on out wide. And that ball either needs to be passed before contact or you just don't try and shovel that off. And unfortunately for the Toreros, they throw it into touch turnover. ASU ball. I got a feeling, Scott, that this ASU team has said no to kicking. They're going to run it or they're going to drive it from here, I feel. Canyon Breeze affecting that line-out throw and collected by Logan Leroy Tatum. Torero's ball here. Spun out to Josh Butler and punched through contact. Ball's flopping around here in the ruck, and I believe that's going to be a knock-on to USD scrum to ASU. A little bit of untidy passage of play. Ball gets thrown over the top. Knock-on there. Scrum. 
Ambitious lineup going, trying to go to the back, but who's there again? Logan Tatum. He's really having a game today, the hooker for the Toreros. It's going to be a stoppage here because I think we've got a man down. Yeah, that's Josh Butler. Bad news for the Toreros. He's been incredible in this entire game. Hobbling his way off into the sidelines. And I think we'll have Joseph Varkas back for the Toreros here playing number eight. Studied abroad in Australia. Learned a couple things about rugby sport. See if you can put him into action here on Manchester Field. Joey Varco, the philosophy and anthropology double major. Well, oh, now that is some brains. Renaissance, man. It's great to see all these different guys in, in the fields that they're studying in. Scrum won by ASU back into the pocket and kicked up. That You can really see the wind holding this ball up into the to trajectories. Back to Devin Hoovel. Nice tumbling run there. O'Leary scans his options. Finds his forwards punching their way through contact. Attacking the same side and spun out wide. That's Paul Habib with a cut in. Fends his man off. He has Jackson Short out to his right. Gives the ball to Jackson Short. Seeking the try zone in the corner. Finds it for the Toreros for five points. Paul Habib. Paul Habib. That's the name. Another assist by him. A great cutting run. Just hands it off to, was it Jackson Short on the wing? It was Jackson Short finding that, and if you would forgive me, well, I'd like to commentate on this one. Out to Habib, cut in, and a boom. No super U, little, little fend-off on his man there. Two on one, finds Jackson Short there. The help defense is a little bit too late to the party, allowing for Short to put the ball down in the try zone, right in the corner there for the Toreros. Difficult conversion for Michael Lewis coming up. I think that try could be crucial now in this game. It just looks like the heads went down from ASU. It's a big effort for them to get back into this I feel the Toreros have just found what's working again pressure inside the ASU half and maybe a slight bit of fitness as well coming into the favor of the Toreros Lewis's conversion will fail to find the crossbar or the post keeping the score where it is at 31-14 Toreros we have it at the 64th minute here in Manchester Field Credit to the depth of the Toreros and the fitness, Will. Ensuring that as the game goes on, as injuries occur, as players come out, your super subs can make that strong impact. Perhaps that with the wind advantage here, making the difference for the Toreros, allowing them to open things up. I believe to the tune of 19 unanswered points here. The super subs, talking about super sub, Paul Habib. He's been outstanding this second half. Literally has been creating two tries, so... Yeah, it's really paying dividends the bench for uh, for the Toreros this half. Jacob Hurl with a high reset collected by Michael Lewis. The fly half. Pocket is set up here for Daniel Sir. Exits quickly. Up and high and push back and over the head. Finds touch will not quite be a 50-22 because the ball did not travel beyond the 22-meter line but still a great, great exit kick from Daniel Sir. They're relieving pressure and forcing the Arizona State Sun Devils to throw this ball in a way in their lineup that they haven't been able to do as successfully in the first half, Will. Yeah, really, really smart tactic from the Toreros. Use that win, pin it down, and the last thing that ASU need is to let that ball hit this turf because it will go anywhere. And it's just landed just outside the 22. As you say, Pressure on, on the ASU hooker to try and find this ball in. It's a great place for the Toreros to be now, especially with this lead that they have in this second half with near sort of 15 minutes or so to go. Hooker Alex Pickton throws the ball into the lineout successfully. Pocket back for the Sun Devils, but they're running this one out. A good tackle there by Michael Lewis and another one by the Toreros forcing the Sun Devils to stay playing right back here in their own zone. Here comes the exit kick. It might have been tipped, Will, but it's collected by Jackson Short, and they have some numbers here. Jackson Short makes a stepping dance move and an offload backhanded to his counterpart. O'Leary's looking for his options here. Dylan Joven with a 
first carry, I believe, of his substitution effort here. O'Leary looking to replay. That's big Shaney Vagbami into the game. Strong tackle is there. Poach on. Spin it left. Space out left, says the danger man. Another, another sub. I think this was... Uh, I think that was... Torres Capus, but Sam Carlson spinning off a tackle there on the wing. Diving for the try zone. He's got it, Will. Another try for the Toreros. Spin it left was the call from the commentary booth, and they must have heard because that was great managing of play from the fly half Michael Lewis for the Toreros, getting it into that wide channel. And I tell you what, there's nothing better for a back row, and they find themselves in that wide, wide, uh, wide channel, excuse me, getting themselves over a try. And was it there? Number six, Sam Carlson. As you can see, they've got the numbers, got the ascendancy, whipping the ball out to the it's edge. It's a great ball by Lewis, isn't it? It's a great ball, and that's a strong carry. You want That's when you have your flankers in the wide channels because they're going to be physically more dominant than the outside backs. So having that one-on-one -on -one there was always going to be a winner for number six, Sam Carlson. Right, you are the international business major from Lafayette. De La Salle alum. Strong ca ca carry there, just spinning off his attacker. Finding the space in the corner, dotting the ball down. Taking his uh, size advantage to the Sun Devils as we had a couple more subs come in for the Toreros. There was Shaney Fagbami in. I believe that was Torres Capus as well. Flag stayed down. Conversion was no good, I believe. Keeping the score 36-14 to 14 USD. It's a great little crowd building here in Manchester Field now as... People bathe themselves in the sunshine on the far end of the, of the pitch. And I think now the Toreros are, albeit still at 12 minutes or so to go, they definitely have control of this match. So we do have some starters coming off as substitutions for Alex Pitton and Nick Davies, the captain, coming off for subs. Unhappy to be coming out of the game, but for USD, this is gas pedal country. Logan Tatum. Collects the reset kick, and it looks like there's going to be some kind of box set up. Nope, it's a carry for Paul Habib. Tackled and rucked. Pocket here for Michael Lewis. He's going to be a Sunday driving kick inside the 22. A mark is not called. ASU's looking to counterattack here. Scrum half spins it out to the right. Flat pass there for Rasa, who scored a try earlier. Right stay. Unfortunately, it's stolen for them. Joseph Varco out of Australia and into the ruck. I believe there was a high tackle penalty advantage to the Toreros as Logan Tatum has some space here. Cutting his way. He's got a lot of his team with him if you can find them, but he is able to do so. Balls out to the corner of the field, and Devin Hoovel, the senior from Chicago, Illinois, with a try. Oh, it's great to see Logan Tatum. Another big carry from him. Gets the ball away, and the Toreros are enjoying themselves now, Scott. It's got to be said, they, they, look, they look energized. They look confident. If we get another replay here, we can see it all unfold. Perhaps the Toreros that Charlie Purden was hoping to see in the first half have arrived here in the second half. Yeah, this is great work. Just keeping on top. Good, strong ball carries. There's nothing fancy going on here. Oh, this is from before. This is our earlier try. <laughs> We've been done over from the production team. Come on. Oh, it was no. so nice we showed it twice. <laughs> regardless, regardless, it was great work. Torero is very much in control now. And Devin Hoovel, repping Glenn points. Ellen. Danny Sir, though, with the conversion kick. Adding on to the Toreros' lead here, he enjoying a sizable separation with about 10 minutes left to play here. Fitness, fitness, speed of ball, ability to control the ball as well, making sure you're recycling it has been a big difference to the Torero. But don't let me get bored of saying this, Scott. It all stems from playing in the right areas. I like the way Michael Lewis sits in the pocket inside his half, bangs it deep, asks questions for ASU. They've got to try and find... Up to 20 points here to even get back in the game. There's no need to run it from your own half. Benches are empty, and we will 
will have a B-side match following this one, so stay tuned. As Lewis finds some space here with a clearance kick. Gathered eventually by ASU here as USC looks to defend this counter run and does so quite well. Arizona State spins it in. Not a clean ruck, but picked well. But unfortunately, this ball is going to find touch. So it will be a USD line out here, Will. About 30 meters out. ASU, they really are trying everything, trying to force a pass. It wasn't probably on because they're really trying to get back into this game somehow. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Again, Michael Lewis plugging it down. Down into the ASU half, and that stems pressure. ASU then forced to make some something out of nothing. They don't get away with it. And now as the ascendancy is in Torero, as they're making this oh. move go forward, no. What do we have? What do we have? Yeah, we have a penalty call. <laughs> we have a penalty call as an obstruction because the mall was not contested by ASU, so you therefore cannot just have all your buddies just drive you down the field, although USD was happy to do so. Um, so it will be an ASU penalty here. They will look to kick for a touch. Kicks coming into your living room. Finally, we got a rep replay of this try. So it actually came from a great turnover from the Toreros. And then my man at hooker, Logan Tatum, give the ball to the big man. He's away. I thought he was going to go all the way, but does well. Gets into contact, but offloads just in time. And as you say, high flyer, the fullback, Devin Hoovel, getting the try. ASU has won the line out. Spins the ball back here. Some space here for ASU. Number 13, Bennett Rone with a nice, strong carry, but he's unfortunately down, and he's knocked the ball, and he's holding his knee, so I hope he's okay. We'll have the training staff take a look at him as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the Toreros are carrying the ball. The play will continue as his man is carrying him off the field to ensure that he's not going to get run into. We have a whistle here on the field for a forward pass. So it's going to bring this one back to the chagrin of the USC Toreros. And I believe that's Brody O'Brien who thought he had some space out in front of him. He had some seven points in his future, but not so fast as the ref. I believe it was a forward pass in the end. Unfortunately for ASU, there's a man down in front of us just inside, or just outside of the commentary booth. Looks like clutching his knee. And he's had a strong game, this number 13. Ben, Bennett, um, Rene, the 13 for, for ASU, the Sun Devil. So I'm hoping he's going to be okay as the referee just takes a little stoppage in time to make sure that medical assistance which has been given there's a great little work from Renee gets away from two tackles just an just, awkward yeah. collision there I think he just yeah just catches himself maybe even a slight hyperextension on the knee it's a fantastic tackle from Jackson Short I've got to say from the Toreros unfortunately on this turf you get jammed in like that on a on a joint and you can unfortunately Cause a bit of damage. Jamming on a joint, I think, was the title of a Cheech and Chong film. Well, for the dads at home, I'd appreciate that joke. Um, we have a little bit of time off here to clear this injury so that there's no danger. Indeed, we have that. It'll be an ASU scrum with a lot of their substitutions in on each side to see how that goes. It's the Toreros this time winning that scrum. Lewis is running with space and directing Paul Habib and giving a nudge kick into space. Well done, Jackson Shore with a B under his bonnet. Trying to find the man for a tackle. And he's got it. Yeah, he's going to find uh, he's going to find a tackle in his arm. I believe this is Torres Capust here running free into space. Here's Logan Tatum very close to the try line. Spun back to Brody O'Brien. O'Brien dishes the ball back into his forwards. Toreros are spinning that. Yeah, take it, take it, take it. Just watch the party. Thanks. And it'll be a penalty back to the Toreros. Must have lost the ball, but attack there was not rolling away. Therefore, it'll be Toreros' ball here. Playing quick. 
Playing quick with it, o, uh, Smith, uh, Lewis kicks it out to out to Daniel Sir, but the grubber just did not work the way he wanted it to. Here's ASU with some space of their own now. A very good idea to kick this ball into space. Oh! And unfortunately, just not. He had a <laughs> lot of space in front of him. Well, if he could have gathered that ball cleanly. Oh, and uh, pounding the turf in despair. Now he's a little struggling as well. And that's a shame because Jacob Hurl, the scrum off, now playing on the wing. He's had a really strong game. And unfortunately, he's now clutching what looks like his hamstring. Did so well to get that kick into space and charge after it. That sat up a little bit more. He was away. Right, you are, Will. I've seen you dot down a couple of tries looking like that. <laughs> yeah, I tell you one thing, Scott, you haven't. <laughs> tries were a rarity at the time. It was like a you know a, a Pikachu card that was silver or something, or Charizard. They were just rarities. You never find them. Line out collected by ASU there. Looking to dot one in here. A lot of substitutions on the field for both sides here. Spun out into the wings. But a strong tackle by Brody O'Brien, like a little missile out there. A cut and a nice slicing run there by Arizona State. But a good, strong counter ruck and a man over the top. Got some WWE Raw going on out here on Torero Stadium or Manchester Field as the ball, I believe, was stolen by the Toreros. It's difficult for me to see who has it. It's ASU. Nice chop tackle there. I believe that was Dustin Braun. And a penalty to the Toreros for holding on. And guess who it is, number 22. Poach and Polly Habib. Paul Habib. Just when the ASU finally inside the half, Torero half, I mean, foreign territory for them, they really have not had any kind of possession inside the Toreros. Well, half, let alone 22. But that's great defense. Paul Habib coming up with it. Again, another turnover for him. If there's a man you give just man of the match for a half, you'd be giving it to Paul Habib. But there's been plenty of others out there who have also put in a big, big shift for the Toreros. They're, they're running away with this one now, Scott. Right you are. And we will name a man of the match on this broadcast before we're wrapped up here. So looks like Will's made his choice. We'll just wait a couple more minutes to make that official. As USC will throw the ball into the line out right here at the 50-yard line. A little disorganized, but collected the back by Shaney Fagbami. Cuts in and offloads to Joseph Varco. A little more space here. He's looking to be brought to turf. He's carried up. His cleats are off the ground, and now he's brought down to the turf. USD with some space here on the right-hand side if they can get around the edge. Daniel Sir, Devin Hubel cuts in. Looks for Jackson short, but is instead brought down in the turf. Nice clean ruck here. Quick spun pass to Torres Capust. Torres are playing very quickly here, gaining ground quickly on Arizona State right here on the on the turf level. Ball is lost, but unfortunately there was a penalty in doing so. Arizona State will have to get back 10. Did not see the call from the Sir. Potentially this was a tackler not releasing Will. Yeah, couldn't really work it out myself. The referees had a word with uh, the Sun Devils. They weren't overly... Um agreeing with the decision from the referee as I think the Toreros is going to tap and go. Tap going to attack the weak side as Paul Habib out to Devin Hoovel, ducks under a tackle. Spins out of another one. Finds the ground in the Toreros will recycle the ball. Quick pop here to the forwards. Spun out to Michael Lewis with a dummy and a cut. And then an offload. Very good there to Logan Tatum. He's had a fantastic match. Popped out to the, to the forwards once more. Spun out. Torres Caputz looking for the try zone, but it looks like he's dropped the ball. I don't think it was knocked. I think it was dropped back. But we will have a penalty for not rolling away given to the Toreros. Let's see if they look to tap quickly once more and punch this one in. We've got to be coming to the end of this match here, Will. Exactly where the Toreros will want to be then at the end. Camped inside. That is the unofficial siren call. Camped inside the 22. They're going to just kick it. I don't think the play will. <laughs> it won't end there. You have to tap it 
and then kick it out to be able to kick the ball out to finish a game from a penalty. So we will have the lineup. So despite that, Will, despite that last play by Logan Tatum, would you like to name the man of the match for this game? <laughs> oh, it's such a shame that he did a little bit of a, well, we, we won't even talk about that kick at the end. Yes, so Will, I think the hooker number two, Logan Tatum, has been fantastic today for uh, USD Toreros. Being around the park everywhere, some really good set piece from him. Defensively being strong, scored that opening first try as well. I've been really impressed by Logan Tatum. Great play by the commentator there to get the ball back to the line out. Recycle this out of the booth and into the game. As the USC Toreros put an ex exclamation mark on this match with a 80 minute try, I think that was Dylan Joven dotting that one down. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that was him to make this a 48-14 score here, Will. Well, what a second half from the Toreros. They really did put their tactics into work. And I've got to say, impressed by Charlie Purden and his side. Played in the right areas, stayed on top, physically dominant and fit. In the end, the fitness paid apart. ASU had a really good first half. They'll be disappointed, but congratulations to USD. Great win here today in the first game of their conference. Right you are, Will. So the Toreros will go on to 1-0 and to start this conference. Arizona State will drop to 1-1. One one, but like you said, Will, this game was in the balance for at least 55 minutes or so. Really yep. could have gone either way. It could have. It absolutely could have. But I stress that wind that we can see or we can tell and see and feel here, which they couldn't. You couldn't, the viewers at home, but really played a favor for the Toreros in the second half. I've got to give a shout out to Michael Lewis at 10. I think he, along with also Daniel Sir, put the ball downfield, put pressure on the ASU backfield, and they had to try and run the ball back. And the reality is when you're, you know, 10, 15, 20 points behind, you end up forcing errors, making mistakes inside your own half. And that really was pivotal in, you know, to, to building a scoreline, building pressure, and Toreros really did running, run away completely in the end, a 48-point uh, to 14 win. Will, it was great to have you here in the booth with us. You are welcome anytime. Once again, we want to give a big thanks to our production crew, TVX Sports Video. For my partner, Will Hooley, and for our TVX Sports Video crew, I'm Scott Thomas, Assistant Director of USD Rugby. Thank you for watching. Do not forget, you can keep it tuned right here on this screen for some B-side action coming up in just a few moments.
This is a TRN announcement. What is going on, everyone? Alex Corbacero here with an exciting announcement from the Rugby Network. We are coming out with a weekly rugby show called the Rugby Rundown. Joining me on this journey is none other than freshly retired US MLR and USA rugby legend, Will Hooley. Is this all good, man? Well, I told you got to be relaxed on camera, bro. Breathe. Many takes later. Thanks, Corbs. Who doesn't love a rugby chat? And we've got it all coming up on the Rugby Rundown, whether that's the top news domestically and internationally around the world. Change of direction here. Cross kicks on. Marcus Smith hit hard. Oh! How's he done that? Oh, my days. That is... That has got to be the best crossfield finish ever. Your college corner wrap-up, your rundown of the week. From the preview and the review, we're going to try and cover it all. On this show, we'll be covering Gallagher Premiership Rugby. Go on, my son! That's a penalty try. No better feeling for a front row there. Premiership Women's Rugby and CRAA and NCR College Action. And of course, the 2024 Major League Rugby season. We'll be joined by guests across North America and around the world. The competition, again, is going to be a lot harder this year. So, you know, that's, that's another challenge for us. Massively grateful for the MLR. Let's go. You're all invited. So join him. And join him for the Rugby Rundown coming out every week, starting this Thursday on the Rugby Network and everywhere you get your podcasts. All done? I'm not again, mate. <laughs>we are live here on manchester field usd b-side versus the arizona state sun devils b-side we had a thrilling first side match and now let's see if these young torero b-side players can make it 2-0 on the day will hooley jumping on for just a bit longer will thank you for staying with us for the second side match what do you think of that first match will well it's everything that i'm seeing it's involved in this b-side match a lot of physicality a lot of guys throwing themselves around really impressed Second half by the Toreros, uh, in particular the, the, the number two hooker, um, Logan Tatum. Logan yes, Tatum, my man of the match. Very, very good quality. Yeah, I think in the end uh, the Toreros just running away with it. Good pressure, good physicality, strong win. Absolutely. So good start here from the Toreros. They have a penalty right in front of post here. So perhaps consideration of taking points. Uh, Shannon Bryce, starting at nine today, has the ball. So. Looks like he's going to just do a little tip and pass to Joey Varco. Good, strong carry from the loose forward and captain for the B-side on the day. That's Gavin Saville now. Out to the six. That's Nathan Granillo playing the six today. Dennis White there wearing number four. Good, strong carry from him. Very exciting. We have three 
recruited athletes playing their first action for the Toreros today. Dennis White was one of them you just saw. Kennedy Martinez, another spring admit. And Dean Rapetti, after a long absence from a knee injury, is playing his first game as a sophomore for the Toreros. Look for all three of those players to make an impact. As Dennis White gets his hands on the ball, a little risky offload. Not sure if we want that quite so close to the try line, but uh, good ingenuity there from the Toreros. They're certainly not afraid to play with ball in hand, and, and they've had the, the better run of things so far. And let's see how ASU executes this lineup under pressure. Maybe he's been watching a few Sonny Bill Williams videos on YouTube. <laughs> a bit of a speculative offload there with the Toreros. Twos getting inside the Arizona Sun Devils. Se uh, second team, B team, half. Let's see, spinning the ball out here now for the Sun Devils. A little exit, that's a high kick. I'm not sure if that made its way out of the try zone. We might have a five meter scrum there for the Toreros if that indeed didn't make it out. Well, we saw in the first game that this uh, this ground here in Manchester Field is really kind of dictated in, in terms of the style of play by the wind. Coming across, Certainly. Coming across the field from left to right on your screen, the Toreros have the wind advantage. And a ASU, as you can say, it's a struggle to exit outside of their 22. The ball just going nowhere in that wind. Indeed. And here's Max Sainz with the throw in. Well taken there by Nathan Grineau. And the mall is on. The mall looked very good in this first match of the day. And the second side boys want to put a little punctuation on this first entrance to the 22 here. Shannon Bryce moving the ball. That's Adam Harakat, the freshman from Morocco with a good, strong carry. He's been an exciting player thus far. And Dylan Joven now getting very close to that try line. Let's see if the Toreros can keep the ball in tight. A little loose ball. That's to Harakat again. He's got to be very close as well. And we do have a try. Can't tell for certain who put that down. Looks like it might have been Harakat with a second strong carry in quick succession. And the trail is just patience in the 22, and that's what you want to see, isn't it, Will? If you're in the 22, come away with points no matter how long it takes. Absolutely, indeed. They did. They definitely held, held that patience, came in numbers as well. You don't want one-off runners. And Torero, the Torero, sorry, getting over the line for the opening score. Real confident start from them. Again, got this win, so they'll really be looking to take advantage of having the wind in this first half. Opening score now, and can they make it an extra two points? Absolutely, let's see. And we have Gavin Saville lining up. Gavin back after a semester abroad in Spain. Left-footed kick. That seems to be good, and it is. <laughs> Did you say he spent some time in Spain? Because he must have got us his soccer skills together. That was a <laughs> lovely little clip. That did look very nice. And we'll see here now as, as we're just getting the game going. The USD uh, roster, Tyler Shelley, number one. Max Saints, number two. Hunter Lysong. Number three, Dylan Joven at four, Dennis White at five, Nathan Granillo at six, Joey Varco, the captain, at seven, but wearing 23 currently. Adam Herrick had at eight, and then in the backs, Lucas Hodson, unfortunately, late withdrawal due to injury. Uh, but we do have Shannon Bryce taking over the ninth shirt, Gavin Saville at 10, Kennedy Martinez, another player making his first start, Dean Rapetti at 12, Brody O'Brien at 13, rounding out the roster. A couple experienced players, Alex Lemon, Jack Porter. Watch those guys in space later on, ladies and gentlemen. Kennedy Martinez, well taken. That's his first touch in college rugby. He's got to be feeling good about that. Ooh, a loose pass. And that's Dean Rapetti. And the Trailers are playing a little loose here. Oh, lovely. But this is some barbarian style champagne rugby here on their own 22. Good job there from the Trailers to secure the ruck. This is Shannon Bryce now to Dylan Joven. Strong carry from the sophomore from Cathedral Catholic. I think we have an advantage for a high tackle there. This Torero's B side is, is playing some entertaining rugby thus far. And we have an offside penalty, it would appear, on the Sun Devils. Didn't catch exactly who was the player made the infraction, but let's see if the Torero's maybe slow things down, kick deep to touch, or maybe we'll just, you know, keep throwing offloads in our own 22. You never know. I was, it was champagne rugby, wasn't it? Again, it was, a confident it start from the Torero's. And that's Saville. That might not find touch, perhaps on the, oh, on the bounce. He's, he's a lucky man there. He's got lucky. And the wind, again, just taking that, that extra few meters, putting it over the winger's head of ASU. Caught him off guard, and it's just the bounce of the rugby ball has been kind. 
to Terreras there. All right, running to the ASU roster now. Number one, Jack Andrews. Number two, Alex Piton. Number three, Rasa uh, Yagmai. Number four, Harmon Crow. Number five, Drake Zinn. Number six, Cameron McDonald. Number seven, Mike Best. At number eight, that's Bronson Smith, the captain. Number nine, Alex McDonald. Number 10, Michael Kim, the second. Number 11, Austin Cox. Number 12, Alex Vargas. Number 13, Matt Loeffler. Number 14, Nick Troxel. And at the back, pulling the strings, Dalton Ferguson. As we have an overthrow there. Might have been a bit high there from the prop, Hunter Lysholm. And I think we have an advantage there for the Sun Devils. Yeah, indeed. And they'll probably just look to settle things down here and kick deep to touch. Yeah, they'll be disappointing for the Toreros because you've got the pressure. You're inside the, the 22 of ASU or just outside of maybe, sorry, outside the 22 of the ASU. And it's just a silly penalty to give away. High tackle. And, and that ball's coming straight towards It's coming towards us. Well. Okay. <laughs> we luckily avoided any injury or, more importantly, damage to the equipment here at the TVX Sport broadcast booth. I think I'd much rather have the ball hit me than the nice camera. Uh, and we will have, I think, the first line-out throw here for ASU. Or I think the second, actually, they had one under pressure. This is number 16 here. Uh, I think that's Jeremiah Rose with the throw. Looks like they might be targeting the middle there. Uh, it's a good throw, just not quite taken. And the Terreros are up on the ball, contesting fiercely at the breakdown. Good, strong collision there. USD well over the ball. Let's see. And the ref in good position there. That's Adam Haricat. What a start from the freshman thus far. That's He's a, got a try and a great poach to his name. That's a great bit of defense. And Gavin Saville, another ball bouncing in and out of touch. But, <laughs> hey, if they make it, we'll take it. it. He's dicing with it, but it will do. Terreros keeping their pressure on. It'll be interesting to see what they do from this line out. What I've been impressed so far is just the continuity up front from this Torero second side. They look like they've, you know, it's not like a fresh side who you, you haven't really played with each other. They look like they, they know exactly what they're doing. First go at set piece, maybe even a drive coming up. We have a nice little peel play. That's Max Saints with a strong carry on that little loop play off the line out. Got to be pleased with that from the sophomore hooker. And that's a loose play there from the Toreros, and the Sun Devils are off. Harakat again getting himself involved. Sun Devils seeing some space out to that right side, spinning the ball. That's a strong initial contact from Brody O'Brien, who came on and did well in that first side match on the wing. He's an exciting player, the sophomore. A little bit of loose play here, which you can get in a second side match like this. Uh, still, you know, players might be learning the game. Not quite as well drilled as his first side, but I'll tell you what, the contact and the collisions yeah. in this second side match is every bit oh as fierce word. as the first side match was. I tell you what, I don't miss playing when I see it right in front of my eyes, just how much these guys are just putting their bodies on the line. And I think it's definitely worth mentioning. So good to see numerous teams in college rugby. You know, we had a great game with the first 15 from both ASU and USD and matching up, showing strength and depth. Two good sides going at each other, as you say, physically really chucking themselves about. And they're just finding their feet in this early exchange, exchanges in the game. It's going to be a few errors. And ASU, as again, I'm going to bring it back to my favorite point of the day. Going into that wind is not going to be easy at all. So they're going to have to work really hard in this first half just to get inside the Toreros um, half and try and capitalize maybe on some points later. Right, sure. Well, you have to think any try going against this wind is worth its weight in gold. As ASU, I think we had a not straight throw there, unfortunately. So Joey Farco will have the decision. Scrum or line it up. I don't think we've seen a scrum yet. So this will be interesting to see how these sides pack down. ASU certainly would have to say, at least in that first half, definitely had the, the Toreros number in the scrum. Let's see how these second sides look the first scrum today. Yep, interesting. First bit of platform for maybe the backs to launch something for the Toreros. They've got some width. They've got some big ball carriers as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Oh, the shove comes Good on, though, from ASU. Good shove on there from the Sun Devils. But Shannon Bryce done well to just rescue that ball. That is not a fun job as the nine at the back of that trying to corral 16 big forwards. Getting ran right over you. That's a good, strong carry from Hunter Lysone there. Sophomore, tight head. And that's Adam Harakat now. Exciting player with a nice little burst right up the middle. Shannon Bryce now 
Shaping to go to that weak side. That's Hunter Lysom again. That's a knock into contact, unfortunately. I think we're playing advantage here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go for a ASU scrum here. First ASU scrum, very dangerous there, Will. No one's taking a backward step in this game, that is for sure. Both physical plays. Slightly one out runners though, Kevin. I, I would like to see if you're gonna make a physical game. Go in numbers. Don't necessarily go on your own. You're exposed. The ball's getting hit out the tackle. And that's probably letting both sides down at the moment. Just need to have that continuity, which I thought the Terraris did have at the beginning. They're just losing their shape a little bit there. Certainly. Scrum is collapsed. And I think Shannon and Bryce might have strayed offside there. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. You can't do that. The scrum off is rightfully getting a few. And, and we have a little extras here. Just like a chirpy scrum half to be in the middle of it, too. And, and Max Haynes, the hooker as well, a bit frustrated. But it looked like Shannon Bryce, indeed, the scrum half kicking things off, which you do love to see. Just an undersized little chihuahua yapping in everyone's face. Joey Varco, the captain, doing well to calm things down. The guys are fired up. They it's are. been a long weekend. We're here on the Sunday. I've seen Charlie Purden in his fair scraps at the nine position. <laughs> so I don't think he can be too upset there with Bryce. As we have the ASU nine here shaping to kick. That's Alex McDonald, the captain. Maybe Perhaps. a chance finally for the Sun Devils to get inside the Terraro's half. And indeed they kick. do. It's a good nudge to touch there. And they'll have a great attacking platform here just inside the 10 meter of the Terraro's. Haven't seen too much out of this ASU back line yet. Let's see if they can spin the ball perhaps. Get a nice planned set piece move here. Let's see if the Terreros maybe try to contest and disrupt this line out here. Wouldn't mind seeing the Sun Devils number 12 get involved in this game. I think that's uh, Matt Luef Lufler. Oh my Matt goodness Luffler, me. That might be 13. You've done your best there. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I'm just more impressed. I'll tell you what I am impressed with. I'm not impressed by my pronunciation of his surname, but I'm impressed by the size of his shoulders. They look wide. They look like he could run a good straight line the inside center for ASU, so if they get, get this ball away from this line out, maybe he'll be used. And that's a great line out there from the Sun Devils, setting up very deep the back line. They are skipping your danger man there, and they do have a little bit of space here. That's a low pass. Jack Porter with a great tackle from the USD fullback. Came in like an absolute missile. We have a little after. These boys are flying into the rucks. They're flying into contact. I'll tell you what, Will. These are guys who want to prove themselves and make a name and make this first side. We have a little loose ball at the ruck. Well done by ASU. They're going backwards a bit here on tack, though, which is not what you want to have happen. Torero's doing well to just continuously push their opposition back, making it very hard to get that front foot if you're just continuously coming back around your own ruck. It's great line speed, getting off the line, putting people under pressure. And that is what happens when you put the opposition under pressure with your line speed. That is great work. And we'll see this tackle this again here. Hit. Look at this. Jack Porter knew exactly what he was doing. Look at that. That's a great form tackle by the fullback. And a good kick now to touch. It's a really nice kick. And the Toreros have another incursion into the Sun Devils 22. The malls looked good. Perhaps an option there. They have some very dangerous backline runners as well. So uh, as with most attacking platforms like this, there's so many options which makes it so difficult to defend here for the Sun Devils. There's so many different ways the Toreros can attack here. Yeah, really dangerous set place for the Toreros to, to get something going. It was a nice little peel play around the back. Will they do something similar to get into the seam, attack the seam of the ASU defense? That's a loose ball there off the backwards hand of Granillo, and I think Bryce has. Let's see what we have here from the sir. Mm, bit we of hot a potato. couple knocks, I think. Yeah, indeed. Bit a bit of, of hot, hot potato. potato. But it'll r result in a Torero scrum, which was put under pressure the first put in for them. Let's see if they can sort things out there. ASU pack has looked strong and physical. They have, much like their uh, their first 15. I was very impressed with how they started the game, ASU in the forwards, very strong, particularly in the scrum area. But anyway, now in the in the second team game, the twos have got a great attacking platform, great attacking place to be inside the 22. 
That scrum went straight down and a bit of loose ball, but Gavin Savile at 10 does well to just kind of play route one rugby straight upfield. That's Hunter Lysom again with the carry. Shannon Bryce and Gavin Savile now marshalling the troops. Got a lot of pressure there for Shannon Bryce. That's Adam Haircat again with a strong carry. Torero's a little patience here would probably be well suited, but that's Dylan Joven. Very close to the try line. And we do, I see the advantage arm out as well from the referee, so free player from the Toreros. That's someone who's in for a try here. I think that was Dennis White in his first collegiate game getting on the score sheet. He's got to love that. Very well earned. A lot of pressure created by the Toreros there, really physically trying to put their dominance on this ASU side. And, and there you go, they're rewarded. Again, this is the difference. Yes, slight one-out runner. It is. It's strong. It's heavy, but the pushing coming on, that secondary push, the latching from the Torero is being big, effective play. And, oh, just over the top. Right, right over Any the Any way to the try line. Take it. Sometimes the easiest way is just right in front of you. That's a good heads-up play by Dennis White after some good job marshalling the forward pack by both Bryce and Saville. And let's see if Gavin Saville can now put it over. Spain did him well. He's got good with the That's foot on the tee. The left foot he's got going on there. Doesn't have much of a backswing. Just a little clip. Call it like a, a, a seven punch. iron. Yeah. A seven iron punch. It's a little punch right through. That's nice. And now, let's see how ASU reacts. They've they've done well, but they've just had a couple loose passes when they've gotten to the Torero territory. And again, like you said, well, they are going into the wind here, so they've got to keep that in mind when they think about how things are going in the territory aspect of this match. And let's see how the Toreros respond here. I always think you're a little vulnerable right after your score, Will. It's, it's Absolutely. easy to kind of shut off and let, let the other team get back into the game here. Let's see if USD can keep their head up, keep attacking well. Early call from Grenier. You like to see that. And look at it. He's off. The freshman loose forward. Perhaps an ill-advised offload off the ground, but well handled there by Martinez. Dylan Joven does well to corral the ball under enormous pressure and offload it in quick succession. That's that's good hands. Yeah, a little, a little Just loose. Bit loose, but now in the favor of ASU, it's broken play attack now. They move it to the right. And that's Joey Varco moving mountains there in the ruck. The line speed continues to be very good here from the Toreros. And that's Max Sainz getting involved defensively. Torreros look like they might have their hands in the cookie jar a bit there, but get their hands out of the ruck. That's good. Good carry there from the Sun Devils. Good strong clear in the ruck as well. Building some continuity now in their phases. This is better play from ASU. It's a good carry there from the tight head. That's Rasa Yamahi. I apologize if I'm butchering that name, which I likely am. But a good carry from the tight head there. USD look to be over this ball and he does to sir well recognized that's dennis white having a great game so far well what really impresses me with this Torreira's defense is they're not just sticking bodies and rucks so they're getting their numbers on their feet fanning that defensive line out wide and oh we've just got another lucky bounce into touch. Is. but it's um but honestly that defense having numbers on your feet not just putting a head in a breakdown where you're not needed and that enables you to be connected to get off the line and then putting the pressure on ASU, and in the end, creating a turnover. I can't, I can't remember who actually got that. But uh, the Toreros and Char Charlie Purden, the head coach, would be very happy with that, that defensive set. Certainly, will you love to see that? A couple of good, strong tackles, and as you said, just staying out of the ruck, being smart, uh, and getting over the ball. Max Sainz here with the put in again in the line out. That's. Very well executed there from the Toreros, and that's Sainz again, looping around. Strong, Strong carry from him, he's straight through. Sun Devils scrambling on defense, Toreros on the front foot. That's Hunter Lysel oh. now, darting through. He's got to be in there, the big tight head. <laughs> and it's as simple as that, isn't it, Will? A couple of times around the same corner, and they're in for a score. Coming around in numbers, hard onto the ball, and it started from the lineup. Brilliant. Set piece play, another peel around the back. Yeah, that was just at the end of the good carry by Max Haynes, and then 
direct straight. Oh, How about tackle. that for a tight head prop there, though? I the tell mobility. You some the swivel pace. in the hips. Showed some pace, a missed tackle, which the ASU would be disappointed about. But as soon as a front rower gets through the gain line, his world just opens up, and so did his legs. Very impressive speed there from the from the big man. Another try for the Toreros. Indeed, some of these front row forwards in today's game are, are just outstanding athletes. And Will Hooley, everyone, will be signing off. Will, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Um, fantastic work by everyone uh, to the crew at TVX. And here at USD and to ASU. Thanks for having me. I wish you all the best of the season. Hopefully maybe see you around again soon. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Best of luck. Come on, boys. And we have ASU now coming back up the pitch. Perhaps looking to just settle things down a bit, playing the Toreros end of the pitch. That's a good strong kickoff again. Grunillo again with a great take from the freshman loose forward playing like a seasoned veteran ball's coming back now to Saville that's a booming kick from the 10 let's see if that ball holds up and it does that's a nightmare for the fullback to deal with here and he touches it down so we'll have a goal line drop from there but that's a great territory flip for the Toreros and a good kick there from Saville Torero's getting into their shape for a kick receipt here. ASU will be kicking this ball drop goal from their own. No, it's it's a. I think we may have a change in the call here, and we're gonna come out for a 22 dropout. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me in the booth for the first time, we have USD forwards coach Oliver Kane. What a pleasure to have Coach Kane on. Oliver, how are we? Hey, Kev. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, yeah, just got it to be out here watching some footy. Thanks. How do you feel about the uh, the play of this this second eight, uh, this B-side forward pack thus far, Ollie? Yeah, just uh, incredibly thrilled to watch these guys, a lot of these guys. Newcomers, unfortunate knock there, but uh, no, lots of uh, very keen beans right here who are just uh, getting after it. So excited to see their skills unfold. Keen beans indeed. As I was talking about earlier, Oliver, we have some, some Toreros here making their first start and, and playing their first college game. Um, Dennis White you saw go over for the try. You know, it was his first collegiate game playing well so far, first collegiate try. Really exciting to see so many young players contribute uh, in this Torero second 15 today. Yeah, obviously, uh, Dennis, as well as uh, Kennedy out here on the wing, really great to see these guys finally get a crack. Um, Dennis with playing very well, two jackals already, getting very busy around the park. So, yeah, no, excited to see these guys, uh, new Toreros in the fold. Absolutely, and let's see now, as we're talking about the pack here, uh, let's see how this scrum goes. We had a little bit of... Um, Perhaps sloppy scrumming, you'd have to say, thus far in the second side match. But this is, oh, yes, as we see, a little, little loose bind there. But, oh, we have a half arm. Let's see if the Toreros can recognize. Yep, they're Get dropping back, back 10. That's go. well done from Dennis' experience. Oh, we're taking the scrum again. Scrum. Interesting call. That's You have to say that's confidence in your scrum there from the Sun Devils. Yeah, the Devils are loving it right now at the moment. Um, we'll see how we react. Hopefully get a good scrum here. A lot of scrum so far. I love it. Yeah, I'm sure. Certainly, lovers of scrums are loving it so far. Perhaps if you're, if you're a family member of a wing or a fullback, you might not be loving us spending a few minutes of scrum. But hey, that is part of this game. The matches are won and lost by the big boys up front, winning or losing the scrum, winning or losing the line out. The big malls, as you saw in that first match by the Toreros. And oh, yeah, I have to say, it's this is a good crowd here for the second side match. So we had a great crowd here for the first, but. Great to see so many folks sticking around for this second side match. And we have Seems a, to be a lot of, yeah. <laughs> a lot of confusion here around the whole uh, bind process, of course. There's a crouch, then there's a bind, and there's a set. Next? But, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, right now, nice. so far we're just seeing the old, the old bind. Um, <laughs> yeah, just right into it. 
Perhaps just some eager, as you said, some yeah. keen beans. All these guys, yeah. you know, they want to get in there. Too keen. They said, for, forget about everything else. I'm just going to find. Uh, and we have a, another good kick to touch there from the Sun Devils. Their lineout's been operating very well so far. Um, again, just a couple loose passes on the outside, perhaps, been their Achilles heel so far. So let's see if they continue to attack and perhaps, perhaps strike up that midfield. We were talking earlier about number 12. Kind of got that peanut M&M &M build, all they just, just mass on him, big shoulders. Probably not fun to tackle on a crash Whoop. line. That looks a little bit not straight, but we're letting them play. Just hold him up there. Hold I there. like that, and there's your number 12. That's a good tackle there. I think that's Max Zane's getting peanut over. M &M. I'm sure everybody inside appreciated him getting that guy early before he built up ahead of steam. That's well done from him. ASU setting up deep Mind here. A nice oh. little cheeky shake and wiggle. A little bit of a contest at the ruck, but Torero's wisely, and that's, I think that's Tyler Shelley with the groundhog tackle there, just sweeping out his ankles. The Shellcat himself, vice captain for this game. Shellcat himself, vice captain. Love to see Shelley out here making tackles, making carries. Ooh, this is a big double tackle there from Dennis White and Max Sains. I think Dennis White is kind of trapped at the bottom. I think we had an advantage there as well. Yeah. Oh, we might have an injury here by the Sun Devil who took that that pretty strong double tackle there. Uh, let's see if Hamid can look up from his notebook over there. and get that. There you go. Well done, yeah, hopefully Hamid. he's okay. Not not great awareness there from Hamid, but the hustle to get out here is, is strong. Like the double really nice double there. shot here. Max that's good. Nice that's, that's a clean shop and top. double shot there. One kind of around the knees and hips and one around the midsection. That's that's good physical rugby there from the Toreros. And we're going to have a look at that Sun Devil. He just absorbed a big contact. And unfortunate reality, rugby is a physical game. Sometimes you are involved in big collisions. And if you come off worse for the wear, that, that's part of the this sport that these very, very tough young men love uh, is getting involved in those physical moments. So uh, let's hope that this player can recover. Uh, looks like he's going to get evaluated on the touch line by Hamid there, who is providing first-class training uh, and medical advisement for both these sides, which you love to see Hamid doing. And it looks like we have some some jokes and some smiles. Hamid, a, a legend level. in his own right. It, I, absolutely. I believe a karate or taekwondo master um, of his his plate. Absolutely. His and we version. hope he doesn't um, show any of that right. currently um, uh, on the field. But, yeah, Hamid, an absolute legend best in the business when it comes to making sure these these players leave the field in one piece uh going home happy and healthy at the, end of the day despite the bumps and bruises they may take sun devils here see another perhaps deep kick to touch as we talked about their liner operations look good and we're kind of buzzing the tower here in the booth and that's veteran leadership from ted of tvx video knew that was never going to hit him as it as it buzzed right over him and this asu line out continued to look very strong clean operation which you like to see crisp from thrower to jumper and jumper to scrum half and let's see if they work the ball to the back line again another clean take there by the devils and a nice crash ball there from the 12 that's good but Torero's meeting him at the game line well again oh, Adam, fierce, fierce counter, counter rug there from Mr. Hurricat contest the breakdown from Saville this is good running rugby here from the Sun Devils. Continuity going the same way. Playing quick ball. Just a little deep in their setup here, so it's easy for the Terreros to catch up on the game lines. Perhaps maybe if they could take this a little flatter, they'd have a bit more success. Still good. Line speed from the Terreros. Defense is looking strong. Good tackle there from Saville again. That's Shannon Bryce. Get his hand out of the cookie jar. Good. Shannon Bryce, to tell you, this scrum half, he is up for it. He is enjoying the physical aspect of this game. Shannon Varko. That's Joey Varko. Making the a mess Arizona of native himself. That's something to prove. Getting really. stuck in there. Said, hey, I went to middle school with you, buddy. Let's do this. And let's see another strong carry from the Stindles. But again, we're not making a whole lot of ground, so they might want to start thinking about perhaps a tactical kick here because they're running into a brick wall now with this Torero defense functioning as it is. Shannon, again. 
Saying it again at the breakdown. The Sun Devils, have they been poached there? No. That's a little bit of a missed tackle up there, but when one gets missed, oh, we a little handoff there, a little option. Yeah, I think that was a forward handoff. Good defense there by the Toreros, Ollie. Very good, very good defense. Uh, you know, just working there, obviously defending very uh, persistent attack from the Sun Devils, um, feeding that Big 12 a lot. But how good? Time for another scrum. It's been too long. So. How good indeed. Let's get back to scrummaging. Enough of this passing, catching, and rucking. Uh, let's just play scrum aside here, and let's see if this Sun Devil scrum continues to be dominant. Let's see what the Toreros cook up here. I see Brody O'Brien on the short side, Ollie. Would love to see him nice get hit. involved. Haven't seen him, and indeed, that's nice. O'Brien. I think he's going to step and carry. Yes, indeed he does. And feeds Martinez, who is the gas man. Into the corner, is he in? Oh, that <laughs> that's Martinez for his first awesome. try. And much like Dennis White did earlier in the game, that's Kennedy Martinez with, with probably his second touch Great to uh, see, yeah. in collegiate rugby. Just speed away, and that's a great connection. There's the sophomore Brody O'Brien with a step out to the freshman Kennedy Martinez. Both local San Diego products as well, staying home and playing rugby here at USD. Great job by Brody Nelk O'Brien, Mr. Mr. Step inside. And then, yeah, awesome to see Kennedy get his first try of the season. Certainly. The, the shocking part there wasn't that Brody broke the line. It was that he passed the ball. I haven't even done that. <laughs> seen him do that yet this season. But a good, a good step there from Brody, and that's great awareness there to feed Martinez who just skirts down that sideline around a couple tackles, just swerving, and goes in for the try. That's that's great stuff. That's a set-piece play from the Toreros. Off the back of what, Oliver? A scrum. A scrum, indeed. Love a that. strong scrum from the Toreros. Really impressed by the skills of these um, second guys from both teams, but uh, obviously biased here. Really good to see our guys with um, just some good catch pass this game. Certainly, yes, some, some great skills on offer from both. And as we've seen in some of these prolonged periods of Arizona State's attack, when you know, they're not necessarily making the ground they would, but it's great to see just these balls passing, these guys passing, catching, carrying, hitting rucks. These are the fundamental skills that will allow these players to continue to improve. So it's great just seeing those guys able to work on that in a live-action setting. And certainly these Sun Devils and these Toreros will be better for it. Grow the game, community. Absolutely. All right, so we now have 26-0 uh, in favor of the Toreros there. Gavin Saville missed his first conversion of the match there. Look for these Sun Devils to keep their heads up, get right back at them. Grunillo, Nathan Grunillo has done great corralling this kickoff so far. Let's see if they target him again. And indeed they do. Nathan again. Oh, oh and that's the commentator's oh, curse there, Ollie. Yeah, Grunillo has done... Excellent work on those thus far, but perhaps just a little bit uh, of a harder chase there by the Sun Devils made that a bit difficult, a bit more difficult of a kick. And Oliver, what do we have here? Oh, baby, I believe it is another scrum. We have another scrum. And a now. Sun Devils put in here, so let's see if they utilize that big 12. That's Alex Vargas. Seems the flanker uh, is binding on the eight and the second row from ASU rather than the Indeed, prop, the little know, the little things that at lot, home that you, you won't notice if you're not a forwards coach, folks. But we'll notice by Oliver Kane, and we're going wide with the ball. Look at that Play over on. the top. Good tackle there, and I think Jack Porter, who's been all over the park so 2017 far. 2017, Mr. Ohio football. Indeed, Jack Porter, incredible athlete, and he's fired up. He's had a good first half. That's O'Brien. Just kind of high steps. He's, all, he's probably about 5'5", five, five, but his legs are getting about six feet up in the air. It's very impressive. And that's Hunter Lyson. Let's see if we move it. Look at this. Out to Martinez, the gas man. Inside ball to Granillo. I don't know if he was quite expecting that. No, I think Nathan, Mr. Granillo, that whole time was uh, looking for the old just carry brother. Correct. I got your latch. Correct. I got Correct. your latch. Yeah, I think he was, he was like, hey, I'm here to ruck and win line outs. And, I'm all done rucking. So let's see how we're going to have a scrum here. So I think it was knocked into touch, but ASU probably rightfully so selecting the scrum, build off that dominant uh, performance thus far from the pack. 
ASU. Look at the look at the hair on the tight head for ASU. I love that so much. I don't think that's the guy who started the game at tight end, but that is a fantastic mullet coming out of Tempe, Arizona. Good push there. Yeah, good push. And again, we have a kind of wide looping pass there by the Sun Devils. Using that 12 as a decoy, which is a good move because he's an intimidating ball, uh, ball carrier in presence. That's Alex Lim picking up the loose ball. Just spilled forward in contact there by the Sun Devils. Let's see how they build now. That's Captain Joey Varco with a little step there. How do you like that? Varco, Arizona legend. Shelly, or sorry, yeah, Max, Max Rayman, Max jumping Max up Screaming for the ball here. Let's see if they can get the ball to him. That's Dennis White now. Into oh, Look at that offload awful. to Max Saints, who wanted the ball, and he gets the ball, and he scores a try. How about that from Dennis White? Wow. Contact the ball. Incredible. Rugby. That's, uh, that's tantalizing stuff right there. Oh, yeah. Max Saints is fired up. And that is a good offload in contact from Dennis White to set that up. Tyler Shelley hyping his buddy up there. And we're going to have a couple replays here. Here's the initial spill in contact of ASU. Alex Lim, Johnny on the spot as he often is. And that's Joey Varco. Look at that. Just wiggling around. One of the smallest guys in the pitch. You wouldn't know by the way he carries. And Dennis White. How good is that? Max that's Jansen incredible. The nice, little, nice little offload right there. That's incredible. Yeah, started from that uh, great carry by Varco. Spent the uh, spent the past couple months in, I believe, Australia and uh, Thailand, um, working on Smokos, and it seems seems it's paid off. I guess. Yeah. How lovely! Yeah, certainly not maybe the most orthodox way to prepare for a spring season, but not an uh, orthodox man, you'd say. <laughs> indeed, indeed, you would say that. Uh, and let's see, ASU again. We've seen sparks um, here but I think they just need to play with a bit more continuity, keep that ball in hand, uh, minimize mistakes, and perhaps they just need to get to this halftime and, and regroup and get ready for the second half. Yeah, 100%. I mean, ASU doing, seem to be doing pretty well here um, in line-out scrum, but um, so I think just building off those big rocks for them would prove to be good. Absolutely. Big chases are coming from this ASU. Absolutely. Uh, the kickoffs kickoff. looked good. You know, they've, they've made life difficult for Granillo. He's done well on most of his – and that's a deeper kick there, so a bit more time. And that's Jack Porter, who I'm going to guess is doing a spin move at some point in this carry. That's yes. it. There he that's is. One. There he is. Maybe two. Yep. As, as we expected. Look at the placement there from Porter. And here's Saville with another booming kick. That might be close to a – I told you on the touch, but dangerous. Wide Manchester field. There we go. And that's out on the full outside the 22. And Tyler Shelley is notifying uh, the touch judge there. Uh, making, making, just making sure. Making sure. Making there sure we caught that. Um, I'll take any opportunity to uh, to echo that um, Jack Porter was 2017 Mr. Ohio football over, I believe, Tyree Hill. Which I think it was Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, Hunt which out. is it's Either, incredible, either incredible factoid about about the man. Indeed, indeed, and and you would know it by seeing him carry the ball out here. He's a very dangerous ball runner. Um, and let's see if maybe they can get the ball out wide here. As Max Sains throws in Dennis White, well taken. A little more here. And so, ooh, so I believe ASU didn't contest there, and USD kind of panicked, just flipped that up the back. Here's but pizza. <laughs> Uh, yeah, ASU kind of outwitted the Toreros there, and the Toreros didn't really execute the backup plan all too well. So a good job by the Sun Devils there uh, of just using the rugby IQ uh, and allowing themselves to get out of their own 22 here. Oh, and that was a kick to touch. Absolutely possibly leaving a dent in that old a Honda Civic. <laughs> That's Civic. Yeah, there it is. And there's he had an opposing, I think an opposing live stream here. So maybe TVX broadcast might have paid off the kicker there to try and take out that Hopefully. other camera. <laughs> Man on the grassy knoll there. <laughs> Back blue.
Good tackle there from Gavin Sapple as the Sun Devils look to attack. Moving the ball well. This is a little more ingenuity here from Sun Devils, but stolen, I think, by Shannon Bryce. Shannon just being a, making a real mess of things all game. Well, I think that was Dean Rapetti the actually in there. Two do have pretty similar faces, actually, when you think about and, and Shannon. By the way, Dean Rapetti um, playing his first rugby in feels like forever, um, overcoming some serious injuries, so it's just awesome as we're ready to see him out on the field. All right, folks, we're going to take a break for halftime. Torero's great first half, 33 to nil. We will catch you in about 5 to 10 for the second half. Stay tuned. Thank you. This is a TRN announcement. What is going on, everyone? Alex Corbisera here with an exciting announcement from the Rugby Network. We are coming out with a weekly rugby show called the Rugby Rundown. Joining me on this journey is none other than freshly retired US MLR and USA rugby legend, Will Hooley. Is this all good, man? Well, I told you, you got to be relaxed on camera, bro. Breathe. Many takes later. Thanks, Corbs. Who doesn't love a rugby chat? And we've got it all coming up on the Rugby Rundown, whether that's the top news domestically and internationally around the world. Change of direction here. Cross kicks on. Marcus Smith hit hard. Oh! How's he done that? Oh, my days. That is... That has got to be the best crossfield finish ever. Your college corner wrap-up. Your rundown of the week. From the preview and the review, we're going to try and cover it all. On this show, we'll be covering Gallagher Premiership Rugby. Go on, my son! That's a penalty try. No better feeling for a front row there. Premiership Women's Rugby and CRAA and NCR College Action. And, of course, the 2024 Major League Rugby season. We'll be joined by guests across North America and around the world. The competition, again, is going to be a lot harder this year. So, you know, that's, that's another challenge for us. Massively grateful for the MLR. Let's go. You're all invited. So join him. And join him for the Rugby Rundown coming out every week starting this Thursday on the Rugby Network and everywhere you get your podcasts. All done? I'm not again, mate. <laughs>
Here we go, we are live here for the second half here at Manchester Field. And we have ASU on the front foot right away. I am joined again by Scott Thomas on the broadcast. Uh, assistant forward coach Oliver Kane had to uh, get back to work. So Scott Thomas, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kev. Great to be back in the booth. How about that play? That was a, I don't think I've ever seen a play quite like that. that Ricocheted off three or four guys and ended up in the hand of the Sun Devils. Like a six inch box kick there. Sun Devils are looking for their first try here. Would love to see them get on the board. Oh, and a penalty to the Toreros. That is a backbreaker for the Sun Devils. I think holding on at the ruck, the Toreros have done well to attack that ball. It's a great job for the Toreros to get out of a tough situation here. Yeah, Kev, uh, Charlie made a lot of substitutions at half there as this kick is going to be in play. Gavin has been bouncing it into touch, but that one, the bounce is not going. Look at Cody going. His first rugby game kind of overrunning things there. Oh, and he took a sidewinder to the ankles there, but gets up well. Yeah, I think we had a whole tight five substitution there. Uh, so we have some big boys with a lot of energy to spare right now on the field. Yeah, what they lack in experience, they're making up for in enthusiasm, Kevin. Look for the Cheros. They're going to have to face up against this canyon breeze. It's been a factor all day. It's blowing from Look our left Look at the double right. tackle there from Alec Wagner and Tomas Muniz. Great job by the two sub-front rowers. And here's Gavin Saville. Good job there. That's Cody going, getting involved. And Chase, jeez, Kim hanging around the ruck there. That's a backwards boxing, but we'll take it. The ASU Sun Devils. Not the most orthodox taking game so far in the second half, but they're doing well to retain possession. They're trying some new stuff out here, Kev. They're not really able to make a lot of gain on the ground, so they're trying some creative things here in the second half. More credit to them. Yeah, love to see inventive rugby. That's Nathan Grineo there, the tackle. Alex Lim assisting. Does well there to roll out of the ruck, but a high tackle. I, I'm not sure if a high tackle or offside, but a penalty against the Treros either way. Let's see if the Sun Devils will kick to touch here. We mentioned earlier myself and, and Coach Kane, Scotty, the ASU, both set piece, uh, the line out and the scrum both look pretty strong for them. So let's see if they continue to have a clean operation here, get this ball out clean, perhaps attack in space. Right, you are. And they're spending a lot of time down the Torero end, Kevin, something we didn't see in the first half. But credit the Arizona Sun Devils. They're keeping the ball in phase play. They're avoiding the knock-ons. They're avoiding the penalties and infractions. They're putting together an attack here. Now they're threatening. Absolutely. And again, the ASU Sun Devil line out. Good job there. And that's a big wide pass there. Well collected there by the 10, who I think moved to the fullback position there. That's Enrique with some good physicality there. You like to see that coming in, making an impact eventually. I think we had number 21 for the Sun Devils, Alex Rayman, enter the game. Um, and he's doing well there. Looks like to marshal the attack. And we have, I think, just a little, maybe a knock or a forward pass. I didn't quite see that on the initial uh, play there. But Oliver Kane was getting pretty excited uh, just about the amount of scrums we're having that first half. So I'm sure he'll be excited here to see how this, this is a full new tight five for the Toreros. So let's see how these guys function now uh, for the set piece. Scrum chemistry very big with this set. But you know, these are some hungry bodies out there. Let's just see if they can just retain this ball. Provide something good for the Toreros to work with. Oh, and look at this, look at the scrum here. Wow. Wow. That is absolutely cratered by the sub tight five. Did That's more than Savile, a little, a little bit of a loop there. That's Alex Lim, dangerous ball carrier. Jack Porter, good clean out there. Yeah, it was a triple skip pass there, Kev. And that's Teddy Monaco with the good carry into the game here. Yeah, look at the difference this, uh, this sub Torero tight five is making. Instant impact. 
That's Kyle Wagner with the carry. Still rumbling. Ian Monroe calling for the ball. Helped along by Chase Kamen. I think a Sun Devil might have his. Oh. And that's Cody going. <laughs> scrum playing half. scrum half in his first game. You always like when a, a tight 5 4 decides to just play nine. And that's a little dangerous ball to Gavin Saville, but he does well. And there's that's oh, yeah. great skills there by Dennis White there, the catch pass. And Brody O'Brien's in space. Look at the step there from Brody. Wow. And they're not going to catch O'Brien. That's just magic. You can't really teach that, Scott. I don't think the coaching tap's going to try and make uh, take too much credit there uh, for that play. But that's pretty special from O'Brien. And, and shout out again, Dennis White, who's a tight five forward who's moved to the flanker position. Just great quick hands there to spin that ball out. That's pretty good from him under pressure. Right you are, Kev. As we see on the replay here. Look at that. White with great hands there. There's an overlap here on this side. Brody does fantastic to step around the first defender and then a show and a go and a cut and a try. So although Brody finished that play, Dennis White definitely made that opportunity for Brody to do all those fantastic things he did on the back half of the play. Absolutely. You'd love to see that. Just the continuity there. You have a, a freshman uh, tight five player out on the uh, you know wide channels feeding out your danger man at 13, the sophomore Brody O'Brien. That's pretty special stuff from the Toreros. And, you know, when you talk about a youth movement and using this as a platform to develop players who will be making contributions on the first team, as you saw Brody O'Brien make earlier today, uh, you know, this is what, at the end of the day, this is really all about, in addition to just, you know, everyone having some fun and playing rugby. Absolutely. And as you saw in that in that scrum reset as well, that this pack is dominant in the scrum. So that allows USD to feel a little bit more confidence as they're opening things up in the play. Yeah, maybe now you can send that double, triple skip pass because you know if there's a knock on an ensuing scrum, you feel good about your pack winning that ball back for you. Absolutely. And we have a, another exciting substitute on the field, Theo Main. Coming into the back line, I think replacing Brody O'Brien. Charlie said, yeah, you know, we've had enough of a look at you. We know what you can do. Uh, and we have Theo Main into the game here for the first time. And let's see the Sun Devils. We've seen a, a little bit better play from them in the second half. And certainly these guys are, are throwing the ball around and having fun, which is you know very important here. Uh, would love to see this 12 get the ball a bit more to ASU. He's still looking very dangerous. That's, oh, no, Callahan is into the game, Scotty. And he's Immediate shaking, impact. shuffling, and <laughs> taking a, a big shot there on the wing. It's a little Irish shuffle on that catch Jeez. there, Kev. That's Saville. How about that for a kick into the wind? That was a great little kind of torpedo kick. Good ball movement from the Sun Devils. A little bit of a high pass up, but look at this. They're in space now. This is good play from the Sun Devils. This is a great counterattack. But Jack Porter, again, Ooh, Shannon Price took a, somehow ended up with the ball. They're going to call this Yeah, attack. no, he's he's on the ground. He's in the ruck. He's done, quite a, few, he's done a few things wrong there. So credit there, Kevin, to the Sun Devils. A good recovery from that strong kick from Gavin Saville, working that ball all the way back across the field through the hands. And it looked like the runner might have been isolated a bit there, but uh, can't do that, Shannon. It's not how you count a ruck. No, certainly not. If you're if you're on the ground in the middle of the ruck, don't you, you don't have rights to that ball there at that point. Uh, and the Sun Devils will kick to touch there. I think the ball got wedged in the we got tree, a tree there. Ball. Thank you to the ASU player who's secured a, an extra match ball for us. Sun Devil lineup has continued to look crisp. Let's see uh, what they do with the ball here. I haven't seen them go to the mall yet. That might not just be in the arsenal here. Uh, so let's see if they if they choose the mall. Perhaps they they spin the ball off the top here. This back lines look pretty dangerous, as you saw from that counter attack there. Um, they've got some quick, speedy guys who can move the ball around in this back line. That is well contested and won at the front, a uh, front by Teddy Monagu, who's a. a, a tall piece of timber out there, Scotty. So love to see him getting up there and disrupting things. And that's Cody going. Look at saw that happen. Look saw at that the happen. contact from the football convert. Oh, boy, that's not the man you want to run directly into. And Teddy Montague with a little physicality there. You like to see that from the uh, the baby giraffe out there on the pitch. 
USC is looking to exit here, but I think they're going to keep the ball on the ground. Their heavies are just running so well, but unfortunately oh, it's not. Cody going on the ball there. Uh, you'd love to see that from Cody going. He's a young man playing his first game of rugby. Uh, you know, played played kind of a lineman position in football, and all of a sudden he's got the opportunity to um, and carry with the ball, make a tackle. You saw this lined up here, Kev. You saw before Indeed. before his defender even caught the ball. You said, "Here's Cody going, bang, big hit there." He lined him up. He put him down in his pocket. And he rolled it back around and rejoined the defensive line. So, really, just technically perfect stuff there from defense here as USC will defend the scrum. And another good scrum here by this uh, substitute tight five for the Toreros. ASU, this this number twenty one. He's definitely looking dangerous with the ball. I have that on the sheet as Alex. Uh, Reem, and I apologize if that's incorrect. We might have had a little bit of a switch around with uh, the numbers here, and I think the Sun Devils might be in here for their first score. Oh, yes. yeah, he did yes. get it down. That's well done. That's well done. You love to see the excitement from the ASU sideline and the ASU players in the field. That's really good and a well-deserved try. Um, they've, they've played well in the second half uh, and a good uh, kind of scything run on the outside there. I think that was the 10 who's moved out wide there, Michael Kim, the second. Shout out Michael Kim, the first, for making it all happen. USC did a fantastic job defending that scrum, and there was some heavy forwards peeling themselves off the turf still, but that's a great desperate attempt there by the try score for ASU. Um, all you need to do is just put a little downward pressure on that ball in the try zone. You don't need to retain possession or anything like that. So that's exactly what he was able to do to put ASU B-side on the board in the second half of this matchup. And look at this. We have ASU chosen to give their biggest player the tight head from the first game the job of running the T out. It's a thankless job. It's a thankless job to play tight head prop in this game. So, again, well worked by the Sun Devils there. Uh, good put down there from Michael Kim, the second. Certainly excited to get on the board. And you saw the, um, the excitement from the Sun Devils uh, sideline here who've been you know, urging that, that team to go forward and, and get their first try. So that's well taken by them. Let's see how the Trails respond here. First time conceding points. Let's see if they are ready uh, to get back into this game. And a good nudge there indeed. So we have 38-7. Uh, you know, there's, there's an outside chance of a, a miracle comeback here, Scott. You know, you never know. Um, you'd think the Toreros uh, would want to settle things down. you perhaps play again uh, in the half of the Sun Devils. And looks like we have Ono Calendar, who might have moved to 10. Uh, yeah, he's shaping up like he might be the kicker in the 10. I don't think I see. Oh, no, Savile's still on the field. So Ono Callahan just very valuable with that, you know, left foot of his. So he'll, he'll take this kickoff here. I mean, he's going to put on the 10, the six pence right here on the 10-meter line, Scotty. As he goes a bit over, but a good chaser by Theo Main. Nice hit. Theo Main, his first impact on the rugby field. And that's how you get a player to fall in love with the game. Love to see that. And that's Cody going, playing his first game. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling up the field here. Torero securing Good the rug. presentation, rucks. Cody. Shannon Bryce working the ball out. I think that's Dennis White again. That's Chase Kamen, the little afters there. Here's Teddy Monaco in a little space stepping. Still rolling. Chase Kamen again with a good clear and capture. Oh, and a penalty conceded. Ooh, we have a little after, a little afters here. You know, say whatever you want about anything that's happening. These guys care about the outcome of this game, and they care about what's happening in the field. They are living and dying on every possession, every carry, every ruck is physical, is fierce. These guys are getting chipped in each other's faces. We love to see that, the intensity and the desire from both squads here. Right, you are, Kevin. It was all started by Theo Main there. Just a great pop, turnover ball. That ball's staying in. Here's Jack Porter. I'm going to predict a spin move at some point here. No, it, a give to Theo Main under a little pressure. He's done well there to secure the ball. I don't think yeah. he was expecting that pass from Porter. Here's Savile now in a little space. Look at this from the 10. And that's Rapetti. Spin the ball out wide. I think that was to Oino Callahan there on the wing. If they can work it back here, Kev, there's a huge overlap over the edge. I think they're going to play some no-nonsense. Root one rugby, though, first and foremost. And then Reek with a good carry there. And I think we have Alec Calvagna now shaping. Good latch by Cheese there. Punch Chase came contact. in there. If we can get him down to ground, we're a little high in the carry there. And looks like ASU has done well to turn that over. That's a good job by the Sun Devils. 
uh, to turn that ball over. Yeah. yeah, good job there by ASU um, just to hold Cal Vagna up and uh, force the turnover there. And that's something we saw in the first game quite a bit too, Kevin. This, this uh, Sun Devil squad is, is coached quite well. Just to, If there's a mall happening on the field, they're bringing that guy up, and then they're holding him up. They're winning that drive back so that USC must bring that ball carrier down to ground. See, I think three or four times today, Kevin, there's been an inability to do that, which has led to a scrum for ASU. Yep, absolutely. Physical play by the Sun Devils, uh, well coached, good technique, solid players, you know, everything you like to see here in rugby. This USD scrum has looked good, Scott. Let's see if they get another hard push here as we've gone to ground, I think. Oh, we have a penalty there. I think a, an early push and perhaps collapse there. Looks like Cal Vagda here on the loose, loose head side. Mm -hmm. Oliver yeah. Kane won't be too happy there. Um, just I think just didn't quite get the hit there. Let's see as ASU kicks a touch. ASU taking their time here, getting collected. That again might not be out. Yeah, Ono Callahan keeps it in. Now is Jack Porter in space. Here's the spin move. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at him. There's another one. Another hey, he made up the last one. time. Yeah, he's like, I, yeah, I, he's like, I gotta do two. I gotta do two. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. There's Shannon Bryce out to Rapetti. Rapetti with a Aye. wild Aye. offload. Straight to Buda Dennis. Collected by White. Bryce. That's a physical carry there by the scrum half. ASU player might be trapped in the ruck there. Wisely getting himself out of there. Here's Cody going. Good carry from him. Physicality from the replacement tight head. And good presentation back. Here's Ian Monroe now. It's a good darting run from him. Chase Kamen has, has done well. He hasn't carried a whole bunch, but he's done well to secure the ruck several times now. Here's Enrique now with a little space. He's a dangerous ball carrier himself. He's doing well there to just keep possession. Torero's just, you know, continuously driving here. And that's for Petty. Quick hands from him. Little bobble. Here's Porter in a little space, though. Is he ISU. isolated? That's great ball presentation. That. Yeah, that's well done. That's well done from him. I think Rapetti again with the carry. Toreros have a little overlap here. I think if they can move it, but we're going to go right up the middle there with Enrique again. And I think the Sun Devils might be on that finally. Nope, I think Sir Sam not on the ball there. Working the ball, and now finally the cheese going right up the middle of the field there. Chase came in first carry into the game. Ian Monroe. Moving it, Dennis White, that's good interplay there from the two guys now playing loose forward. And Shannon Bryce now having to snipe himself. The sophomore scrum half. It's a high tackle advantage, Kev. Yep, indeed. Going high on the nine. You got to dip your body height there. He's a smaller player. That's Tomas Muniz, the warthog, going right up the middle. Oh, oh. Love to see that. <laughs> Trucker horns are blaring here in the TVX broadcast booth. And we got to think we're probably coming back here for the advantage. And no, the Alex Lim will have a little dance around. Alex Lim, how good awesome. is that there? How good is that there from the wing? Refusing, and there's no release there by the tackler, but we're going to keep playing here. Big overlap. Let's see if Chase Kamen. No, Chase, Chase Kamen. He's going all the way to the edge. <laughs> good tackle there out in space by the Sun Devils. Oh, and a good, a good turnover. She's really needed to move the ball there. I, I yeah. knew he wasn't going to, but the overlap is very much on there, Kevin. So Arizona State is doing well folding in, but once that phase of play makes its way all the way to that sideline, it seems like the Arizona State defenders, you can see them with their hands on their knees right now. This is a tired group, so they are folding around the ruck only. They're staying right around the ruck, and there's a lot of space for those wing attackers for USD. If they are given the ball, there's a lot of space there. Shannon Bryce has done well. This half to move the ball quickly from ruck to ruck, but as oh. that ball finds touch, um, there is a lot of space for the Treros to attack. Indeed, yep, and and just you know, got shot that one up to lack of experience. Uh, you know, very green forward pack here on the, on the in the field of play here, so you can't fault them too much by just wanting to put their head down and run. And let's see what ASU chooses to do here off the line out. USD's been disrupting it a bit more in the second half, which you'd have to chalk up to the inclusion of Teddy Montague. Uh, very dangerous player in the lineup. Whoa. And that's well collected by Dennis White at the back there on the overthrow. 
Good job clearing the ruck there from Cody. Spinning the ball out wide, that's Ian Monroe in a little bit of space, but quickly swallowed up by a couple Sun Devil defenders. That's Shannon Bryce another with another break. snipe. Let's see what he does here. He's opening the legs up. Ah, he doesn't quite have the gas to go all the way, but that is a good run. And that's Gavin Saville now. Around the weak side, let's see if the Toreros just get into their kind of truck and tractor shape now, just run it straight up the field. That's good stuff from them. It's all about continuity and phase plays. Now that's Enrique here, who's had a quick a few scores from this type of distance thus far this season. USC's playing with some kind of advantage here, Kevin. I believe it's penalty. Yeah, you have to think probably penalty advantage for in this area of the field, and there's been no knock on. That's that's Teddy Montagu again, and I think that's Teddy Montagu in. Yeah, that's a fantastic scamper there to get things started with uh, Shannon Bryce there, Kevin. He's been able to see that space pretty well, so he's had a look. He's seen something he likes. He picks, he, he peels off, and he made a very tremendous run in his own right. Very close to the try zone, was just barely caught at the end. A couple nice phases there by Reek and um, by Gavin, and then I, I believe, yeah, it was Teddy Montague able to dot the ball down for the try. Yep, and let's see, we have the initial break here. Shannon Bryce just, yeah, a lot of space there for him to uh, poke right through. And he is so nearly all the way through, just didn't quite have the gas. That's a great track back tackle from the Sun Devils. And just Teddy Monaco being helped over by a couple of his friends there to get over for the score. Torreira is back on the scoreboard again in the second half. Young Bulls are rolling. Indeed. Salvo converting into the wind. It's a tidy Fantastic. nudge. It's a tidy Fantastic. nudge. Good kick from Savo. Get on the scoreboard again. We have a 45 to 7 score line currently in favor of the Toreros. This Torero second side is nothing to turn your nose up, folks. This is a solid team that would compete with a lot of top sides in the Southern California region. There are some very solid players on this team. The futures, Kevin, they're here. You're seeing them there. They're not quite polished where they need to be for A-side action, but very, very enthusiastic effort. Some flashes of absolute brilliance here. And this is Purden's future, too, so he must be loving what he sees. This is a very young B-side squad, too, Kevin. we got a lot of freshmen and sophomores out here. Absolutely. Expect to see some of these players contributing to first-side rugby later this season and beyond. The future is now kickoff here from the Sun Devils. That's Jack Porter. Can we have another spin move, perhaps? Oh, he could have. He could have. That is not a spin. There, that is a spin there move. it is. That is a spin move. And is he's that still it? going. That's a half spin. And he's an offloading. With the offload. To Den uh, then, no, that's a uh, that's Dean Rapetti there with the carry. Good support there. That's, that's a Dean pretty Rapetti, good. The flying Hawaiian the ready the for it. Hawaiian indeed. And that's a great. The initial carry there from Porter was something pretty special there, Scotty, uh, in open play. Enrique placing that ball, and that's Ono Callahan in tight quarters. I don't know if that's his preferred method. And we have Sam Carlson. Oh, here comes the pizza. Sam Carlson with a grin on his face with a pizza drop-off for the Sun Devils, and they are much appreciative of that. Very appreciative of the Sun Devils for making it out here uh, and giving us a great contest. And happy to be sending And that's Sam Carlson. Yeah, most popular man on the pitch. Indeed. Nope. Does Indeed. not quite know yep. how the broadcast Put, works. Putting the peace <laughs> sign up to the uh, to the replay screen and then and finally noticing where the camera is. All done there by Sam Carlson. Thank you for displaying great sportsmanship there. Scored a try earlier. He did indeed. He did a nice, so, uh, you know, nice try on thing. the edge. He's doing his job great, today. Great performance from him in that first side match. Sun Devils, that's a nice kick into space. Jack Porter, maybe not the guy you want to give the ball to right now, though. Nice dummy and step there. Oof. Solid contact there, but well taken by Porter. Alex Lim securing the ball for him. That's Teddy Monago into contact. Another good carry from him. He's been very active since entering the field. Cody going, wanting to play scrum half. <laughs> He wants the ball. He, he wanted wants the pick the and the go there. And it looked like Teddy was, His knees was down. trying to hold it away from Cody. Cody. So we almost had a, um, a not release two men on their own team, Kevin. You don't see that very often. That's Theo Main right up the middle of the field. A little four and three here, Kevin. And that's a that's great it. pass by Porter. That's Alex Lim in space. And he's in. Jack Porter having a great second half and 
excellent work there to execute that two-on-one in close quarters and feed Alex Lim, who did the rest. Yep, this is great hands from the Turo back and, line. And Kevin, this is something that we didn't see the A side do in the first side. They're converting a four-on-three overlap here. That's a fantastic job. They're the quick hands, Alex Lim with the burners to, to find the try zone. But that really, this is a B-side game here, Kev. You don't see that a lot. That's a four-on-three conversion. Ball beat the man, a quick tip pass. Certainly per perhaps some some film to watch for this, this first side as the second side is um, showing them how it's done. We have Gavin Saville now with a tough conversion, uh, this left-footed kicker into the wind. This is a very difficult kick. Catching his breath, shaping up. That's a good opportunity, but that's just that's a tough left to right kick for him as that wind's just kind of always blowing that ball away from the posts. Savile's done well thus far though to marshal the Toreros up and down the field, 10 position. Some standout players in the second half. Jack Porter has been been the spin special, cycle. been special so far. Putting the Sun Devils in the spin cycle, Kev. Absolutely right you are. You know, he he was a part of that try as well. There was a kick to space there. But it went right into the waiting arms of Jack Porter. He was ready for it, draw, drew in some defenders, and created, helped create that overlap for Lim and others to convert. Indeed. So let's see how the Sun Devils react. Uh, again, we've seen some, some sparks, some energy from them in the second half. Uh, again, some of the things the Terreros are doing really well, just that final pass just hasn't quite gone to plan for the Sun Devils. But there's a lot of, you can tell there's a lot of talent, uh, ingenuity, good rugby IQ there. Um, but just, you know, a couple things letting them down. But let's see if they can continue the, during these last 15 minutes to continue to press, maybe get another score on the board. But let's see if they can wisely kick this ball not to Jack Porter, and they, they, they do. That's a good decision. It's actually not a bad kick, Kevin. I, I like the idea there. It puts the Terrero defender, or the receiver, in a very awkward position. And it puts the touch judge apparently in an awkward position too because I don't think he's able to tell the sir exactly what happened. Yeah, you tell me, sir. I think I think we have a USD line out here. I think that just kind of went. Uh, that didn't go out in the full, but it did bounce into touch. So it's a good good option there from the Sun Devils. Let's see how this Torero lineup functions. Torero's walking in, going to the middle. Well thrown by Tomas. And here's Tomas yeah, Muniz, baby. the warthog, trundling up the field. Well done, Tomas. Rewarding the big man. For yeah. a good throw with the ball carry. Love to see that from Tomas. That's a strong carry from him. Just right up the center of the field. Well done there by the Sun Devils to uh, force the turnover there. Couldn't quite see the player it was who won that ball, but that's that's well done by the Sun Devils to get over that ball, poach that, win the penalty, and let's see if they can kick deep to touch now. Okay, so you're taking their time. Good deep touch. That oh, that Jeep Cherokee just narrowly avoiding disaster there. That's why I parked on the other side of Manchester, Kevin. Very wise. A danger quarter there. We had a softball game happening. We have a rugby match happening here. I think you were at the game we had here on Manchester Field where kick went into touch and just hit the right spot of a windshield, just shattered it. Indeed, I, I remember actually a, a, a incensed gentleman <laughs> came on the field asked us to stop the game uh, during, during that. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, he did not win that battle. Uh, as we have the Torero stealing the ball, that's Tomas Muniz again. Good carry from him. Sloppy ball there at the ruck for the Toreros. Here's Ono Callahan, a little veteran leadership stepping in there at nine. Some fierce collisions coming in from the Sun Devil. These guys are not quitting. These guys are not giving up. Here's Cody going. Great carry from him. The tight head prop. He's had a good second half here in his first time ever playing rugby. Dennis White, not his first time playing. His first time playing for USD, though. Good from him. Here's Rapetti out to Theo Main. Good unders line by Theo yep. Main there. Yeah, well done from Theo there, taking that into contact. Certainly a thankless job at times, being the guy who sets up the next phase. Little space here on the short side. Yep, let's see if they recognize. Nope, nope, we'll keep going strong. That's a high ball. Chase came and does well just to corral that, uh, live to fight another day. Sun Devils, yeah, I think the, that ruck was already set. 
Furious calls in the sideline to tap and go, and he does. That's Tomas moving the ball. That's Dennis Good White. There. Deception. Into a double tackle. That's well done by the Sun Devils. Looks like we might have another penalty advantage here for the Toreros. They may not be getting back on side, Kevin. Look at this, oh Theo Main. Why? Playing scrum half in his you? first game. <laughs> we have an overlap right. We're feeding the ball back into the... Here's Porter again. Oh, my goodness. Here's Porter again. Shaking off a high tackle. The fake inside, and he scores the try. Aye, aye, aye. Jack Porter. So... Special. There's a that's a fantastic run by Jack Porter. And Gives the ball to the ref. You take it. You take you kick I'm the conversion. Done. I did my job. You do the rest. So this is something. Shout out Locke Vetter, legend of the game. Would always say, do not over coach your players. Do not coach the flair out of your players, because this is what we have. We have a short side off option. The Sun Devils react to it. There's no longer space in the short side. The Toreros go short side anyway. We have a guy picking and diving into the heels of the defense, totally isolated on his own. Uh, the Toreros regain possession of this somehow. And then Jack Porter breaks five tackles and scores a try. Just like we told him to. <laughs> Just, he's doing exactly what uh, I told hey, him. Hey, hey, habita, habita. I, You know, it's like, you know why coaches lose their hair. So you see Gavin Saville, I think maybe wants to keep his kicking percentage. He had a tough kick there. He said, oh, why don't you take it? Yeah. Uh, you can go 0 for 1, uh, so you're you're batting 0, uh, and Gav will keep his record going. Look at that, that little kind of fake inside dummy, dummy Scotty. Uh, kind of dummy to nobody, but it, it kind of maybe slowed him down a step. That's a great carry from Jack Porter, though, in the dish to the ref. It was. We saw the very end of it there, but Porter broke three or four or five tackles on his way to that try. So fantastic, fantastic running, really, by Jack Porter in this entire second half. Adding to this Toreros advantage. 55-7 for the Toreros here. Uh, you've just seen a big impact here from the substitutions uh, by the Toreros. You know, the substitution tight five, some sub backs coming in. Theo Main having an impact. Cody going, huge impact. Jack Porter, obviously, like we talked about, has been excellent. Let's see if the Toreros can continue this run of form. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a penalty. Uh, so a couple players there, Dean Rapetti and Owen Callahan, just not talking to each other. Uh, Owen thought Dean was going to take it. Dean thought Owen was going to take it. Uh, if either of them just took it, you know, that's that's an easy easy exit there. But instead, that went forward off Owen into Dean's hands, which is an offside. So that's a penalty to the Sun Devils and um, kind of gifted opportunity for them. And, and certainly that will be a, a talking point this week on film review. Complete this old rugby adage, Kevin. You got to catch the ball. And you, and when you're returning a kick, you gotta talk. You gotta put a name on it, Kevin. That's what they teach you. you. It's day one stuff. On Indeed. Who wants the first? I hit? think the problem was Owen said Bill, <laughs> Dean said Dave, and uh, they were using their middle names. Yeah, that was that was that's maybe what it was. the issue, the confusion. Yeah, Eoin Dave O'Callaghan. Eoin Dave, <laughs> Eoin Dave O'Callaghan, unfortunately not able to corral that. And we'll have an attacking opportunity here for the Sun Devils, which, you know, on the bright side here, we'll get to see some some perhaps speed, skill, and flair here from the Sun Devils. Number 12 looks like he's in a kind of a track starter's blocks. But that's Teddy Montague, says not today. Dikembe Mutombo-esque there as Montague gets up and smacks that ball away. Tomas Muniz, strong carry from him. He's been active since coming onto the field. Substitute hooker. Gavin Saville in the pocket. Kicking into the wind here. I tell you what, Scotty, into the wind. That's 50 yards on the fly. And Theo made. Oh, oh. just overrunning the ball. <laughs> knocked. And we have a knock there by the Sun Devils. And the Gavin Saville furiously wow. trying to get the ball. That's, I tell you what, that is a great kick from Gavin Saville from inside his own try zone all the way up to midfield into the wind. And then Theo Main. That ball, you know, perhaps getting introduced to the egg-shaped ball for the first time. Doesn't necessarily bounce the way you think it's going to at times, so he just kind of overran that ball, unfortunately. Yeah, an absolute screaming banshee onto that ball. So, you know, you have these opportunities. That's where your soccer skill comes come in handy. So you can nudge that ball on with additional kick. It, it kind of put the Sun Devil receivers in an odd position because they were so far back 
Then they kind of slowed up and they realized the ball was going over their heads. They retreated much farther and then the ball was bouncing in front of them. So if Theo could have nudged that ball on by the boot, he could have had another try. Certainly, yeah, but at the at the end of the day, we'll have a scrum midfield for the Toreros, which they'll have to say they'd be happy with uh, on their exit. Scrum collapses, yeah, 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 and yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah, a yeah. penalty to the Sun Devils. I'll leave it to uh, the front row analyst to tell you exactly where the penalty was there, but perhaps just a collapse uh, in the front row there. Another opportunity for the Sun Devils. A couple self-inflicted errors in short succession uh, by the Toreros, and the Sun Devils will probably look to kick to touch here. Indeed, yeah, shaping the kick. Scotty, go ahead. USD Scrum was in a fantastic position there. It seemed like they had everything they needed, but I think they lost the bind. Perhaps, and that's a kick over the head of Ono Callahan, which he won't be happy with. But a good nudge there from the Sun Devils. Inside the 22 now for, uh, I think, the third or fourth time this half. Haven't come away with points probably as much as they would have liked. Let's see if they can get Teddy Montego up at the front again to contest and steal this ball, as he's done well to do so far this half. Yeah, look for some deception here, Kevin, from the Sun Devils in their line-out. That's really what you say for this uh, situation here. A line-out inside the 22, you want to throw your fancy stuff at them, just deceive that defense a little bit so that you can see a little break and find the try line. Indeed, we have a high arcing, and that's Cody going, going up and winning the jump ball. Wow. And he is wow. rumbling up the <laughs> field. Can he go down? Yes, Bringing he the can. Whole pack well done. And I think we have a penalty advantage there as well. Ian Monroe with the carry. Terreros have a little space here if they choose to use it. Shannon Bryce, a little bit of a messy ball there. Does well to get it out. Good line speed there. And Dennis White offload into contact, as you've seen. That's Alec Calvagna. Shannon moving the ball. That's Teddy Montague. Teddy Montague with a nice step and carry. And an oh, great Fantastic. offload to Enrique. Hold it now. Look at Enrique going up the field. Ooh, that was awkward. Split at awkward, midfield. yeah. But he's all right. That's good flexibility from the loose forward. There it is. Look at the offloads here from the Treros. They're having fun. Good tackle there by the Sun Devils to send Cody going backwards. Five on two here on the wing. Yep, Dean Rapetti says, I don't need four extra guys. <laughs> I'm just going to carry straight ahead there. Good clear out by Theo Main. That's Montague again. He's had good footwork and contact, Scotty. Not the, uh, you know, stoutest player, but he's, he's done well to kind of shake that wiry flame. And that's another offload by Chase Kamen. That's Ian Monroe through the middle. Good tackle from ASU there. Gavin Saville now marshalling the troops. Slowing yeah, numbers, things down. Numbers still left here. I don't know if Cody is going to pass the ball here, but no, there are numbers left here. It's a four and three. His forte quite yet. Low good ball hands. well corralled by uh, Ian Monroe. Yeah, good carry from him. Torero's going to work here. Six or seven phases in out of this attacking pattern. Oh, boy. Ball is out to Repetti. That looked backwards, but I think we had a penalty advantage we're coming back to. Let's see if Alex Lim wants the ball out here on the wing. Kevin, with only two minutes or so left in this B-side game, would you like to name a man of the match? Who tough, Scotty. Tough to, uh, as, as we see the developing player. Oh, no, Callahan right to the no middle. Way. Taking his yeah. pants off. Put the ball down, Owen. Oh, no, I think it got held up. No, oh, it did. No, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, it's just inches away from scoring. Uh, yeah, man of the match, Scotty, I think it's a tough one because, you know, Dennis White's been excellent. Jack Porter's been very good. Uh, Gavin Salvo's controlled the ball, uh, controlled the game really well at 10. Um, I'd, I'd give it, I'll say, a backs man of the match, Jack Porter. Forwards man of the match, Dennis White, for me. I have to agree with you there, Kev. There's been some absolute brilliance out here for the Bees, the Killer Bees, and the future is bright for USD Rugby. Definitely an inclination of that being the case as we'll have a goal line drop here to the Sun Devils. Uh, let's see how the Toreros, this is a great opportunity to counterattack here, so let's see where this ball goes. Who chooses to put a name on this ball and counterattack here? Let's see if maybe we have a deep. That's a high ball. That's tough to deal with. Let's see Alex Lim calls off his uh, teammates. That's good from him. Tucking the ball in one hand, so he's probably only doing one thing. Good for him. We have some screeching. screaming. I think Alex Lim's family might be here. I would here. hope so. Uh, otherwise, there's something awful happening in the parking <laughs> some, lot. Uh, some that's, rabid coyotes. That's, that's <laughs> Alex, Alex Lim with a good carry. Love to see the support from his family, uh, as it's a great carry from Lim. 
Uh, and I'm sure they'll oh love goodness. watching the highlights later of, of Alex Lim has also had an incredible game, including that long-range breakaway try. Torero's kind of going backwards here. Let's see if they can get on the front foot here. That's a good carry by Teddy Montague. We have the arm out for a high tackle advantage there. Enrique in the fray again. Uh, these, these sub forwards have done very well here. The Torero's oh, what a great That's pop. Gavin Saville in for a score. That's a good offload off the base from Dean Rapetti. This and the whole thing started by Alex Lim. The family's loving it. It's a fantastic turn of events here, Kevin. Look at that. Rapetti taking it right out of the ruck. And then look at the, the dish That's great. off the that canvas is there. Great That's stuff. fantastic there. Rapetti setting that one up quite well. This might have been your final play here, Kevin, as the siren goes. Dominant performance uh, by the USDB side. Love to see the work uh, from the second team. As you'd have to think, Ono Callahan's confident to hit this to make it a 62-7 to victory. Uh, Well-deserved by the second team, Scotty. Some great... Yeah, the screeching continues. I love it. I love the, the passion from minute one to minute 80 uh, by the Torero fans on the sideline. And I think we do have full time there, called by the referee. Well, well refereed, I think, both contests today, Scotty. I would agree. Um, a great shift, double shift by the yes, surf. Yes, it displaying great fitness, if nothing else. Uh, and a really great performance by both Torero teams today. And a just a great sign for the future for these Toreros that there's, correct there's me depth I'm, across the board. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin. 62 points in the Bs. I believe the A scored 48. Do we have 100 Turo points today? Uh, we have a little more, Scotty, if you do the math. Uh, but five guys, uh, five tries I from didn't both carry teams, the one. Scotty. So what are we going to have? We're going to hit our Bonus five points. guys promotion. Oh, five so guys, burgers, five and guys burgers and fries promotion. If you go into five guys tomorrow, you can pay full price for any normal <laughs> cheeseburger. Uh, just whatever the menu says it is. That's what you can, you can buy if you want. Uh, no pressure at all. But that is five tries from the first team and the second team. And a great performance from everyone here at Manchester Field, both teams, the officiating staff, the TVX broadcast booth. As always, shout out TVX, USD's exclusive broadcasting partner for the 2024 season and beyond. Scotty, anything to say to the people as we sign off? Go USD Rugby. Go Torero. Thanks, everybody.